everyone welcome to another virtual painting session i am about two minutes late today um, if you go to the community section uh, and look through the posts that i've made i have posted the photo reference i could not figure out why it was uploading horizontal so again that should be a quick fix for you but i have posted the photo reference for tonight in the community section in case you are interested in the photo reference for tonight's virtual painting session and i had a, a request for glass uh, to paint a glass still life so that's what we're gonna do today hey pam hey bruno hey fatima and again uh, hey steven how's everyone doing today so let's go ahead and get started with our still life painting um, so i'm going to be using of course the uh the good old french umber which is also of course uh raw umber a little bit of my turpentine i still have to put my medium out i actually haven't even put the medium out um so let's go ahead and put the platform of course the good old t-square is what i use to place the platform of my still life element so i'd say about here i usually don't center it so i guess somewhere over here and again the paint does have a little bit of the turpentine uh, distilled turpentine let's move down see it's a little bit runny and that's okay and we'll place the other part of it here and then another line here so as always feel free to ask me any questions that you have during the stream and I'll be happy to answer and of course please ask anything that is on your mind uh, so hey uh, Mario uh, probably mispronounced your name Sandona how are you doing um, so right now I'm gonna get started with the basic placement and I actually want to center this wine glass um, this wine glass actually has a, a peach cider in it uh, I actually didn't have any wine to put in the wine glass but we'll just pretend like the the wine glass has some uh, actual wine in it but in all actuality it is uh, peach cider uh, so now I'm actually going to do another straight line here just so I can place a center line for the wine glass. So, you know, even though it's a still life object, I want to have some kind of indication for a center line. And maybe we'll place this one over here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm probably going to move things around. So what we have is a kind of transparent glass object. Uh, we have a transparent glass object that has something on it, and then we have a, uh, or in it, and then we have a, um, you know, a pretty, a kind of semi-opaque glass object here, and then we have a distant glass object in the background. So definitely lots of different um, textures going on here. Uh, so hey, Susan. Hey, hey, Gata. Whoa, hello there from Poland. Um, hey, uh. Naima, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a great day. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the very basic elements in this drawing. So let's see here. Uh, I'm going to place the bottom. I'm not going to be that analytical, but when it comes to a wine glass, um, you know, it, it's it's better to start with some kind of architecture, uh, just because it's a you know it's a very uh, kind of I want to say architecturally sound structure a little more symmetry demanding so that's why I'm uh, drawing a little more carefully uh, with the wine glass and of course uh, it's going to change when we get into the big masses and the big colors we're starting off with the abstract hey Caroline Russo how are you there from Jacksonville Florida I hope you're doing well um, so yeah just a very simple abstract block in is what we want for the wine glass i want to think about the basic pattern the basic composition of this still life uh, so i purposefully placed this element um, I, I have it overlapping so again everyone if you want to draw or paint along with me uh, the photo reference has been posted to the community section uh, so i you, you're going to have to rotate it i apologize for that i, I have no clue why that is um, it is straight up like uh, vertical on the photo reference uh, little section there and it's also vertical on my computer but when it uploads to 
Uh, YouTube, for some reason, it wants to show as it's horizontal. I have no clue why that is, but, you know, that that is what it is. Um, and this is going to be kind of in the similar style as the previous Alaprimas, except I'm going to draw a little bit more carefully. So please feel free to ask any questions on your mind. Hey, Pam. I hope everyone's doing well today on this wonderful Monday. Gotta love Mondays, the beginning of the workday. So let's see, a little bit lower. So I actually, um, when I have three elements, so this is the first uh, triple element still life that we have here. Um, I try to have something lower, so closer to us, basically. Something kind of in the middle, which is what this one is. It's kind of in the middle. And I'm just speaking in terms of composition. And then something a little bit higher up. So right about here. And give or take. I mean, these are just rough approximations. So see how this is going to be a little bit higher. And I'm not going to be trying to make it perfect. Um, with still life, I really enjoy, um, you know, I, I enjoy more abstract, more kind of... Uh, um, I guess, uh, expressive still life when it comes to, um, you know, the style. Let's see if I got any questions here. Hey, Pam from Ecuador. Hey, Isra. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm glad that you really like the, uh, the videos. And I'm glad that you like the portraits. We'll definitely do more of the portraits, but, um, oh, okay. Portraits of different colored skin tones. Um, yeah, we, we can do that. I have to go ahead and, um, you know, check on my older photo references because I haven't really had any models, uh, you, as you know, in a long time. But isn't this wonderful, everyone? The fact that we can see this, uh, the fact that we can see the uh, comments here. And I have uh, something, uh, a surprise in store for everyone today for this stream. But I'm going to wait for a little while before I show you uh, the surprise in uh, this stream. So just hold on tight. I'll give you a hint. It involves art. <laughs> Not much of a hint at all, I guess. And just very basic, simple shapes here. The reason I like to do still life in this style um, versus portrait, since we're talking about portrait. Um, portrait, I do kind of exclusively classical, uh, classical style. Um, so it, and that is just because it's very demanding in drawing. Um, maybe not so much when it comes to painting technique. This is more demanding in terms of painting technique, but not as much in drawing. So this can potentially be a little bit more forgiving and more fun uh, sometimes, dare I say, when it comes to these kind of painting sessions. And now I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. It's okay. I'm going to go in and uh, kind of carve into it. But I want to make sure that the composition is something that's all right. Hey Pam, I hope to start doing this live, uh, the live painting soon. I'm close to finishing the semester. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely would be awesome to have you painting along with us. So this is going to be about the basic composition that I want to have. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go in for the darks. So um, as you see in the photo reference over here, the background is going to be a major, is going to play a major role in the um, overall development of this composition. So I'm going to start off with the centerpiece and I'm going to um, get a larger brush. Uh, now I'm definitely going to want to use my medium. So I usually use um, medium either in the third layer of a classical painting or um, in an ala prima. I use medium kind of freely in ala prima because it's going to be a one sitting painting. So this is going to be done in one sitting. Hey Fatima. Hey, hello there. Thanks for watching from uh, Pakistan. Thanks for joining the live stream again. And I hope that everyone is going to enjoy uh, today's live stream. These live streams are pretty laid back, uh, kind of chill, slow paced, sometimes fast paced, but mainly slow paced ala primas. Um, we are going to get into some more of the portraits later on. Um, but for the sake of these paintings, I think it's, it's a little, 
um, safer to stick with Ala Prima just for now. See how I'm drawing the outside? Uh, and it's very similar to how we were drawing the, um, the, uh, the whatchamacallit. There you go, the whatchamacallit. The metallic object uh, just on Saturday. Now, of course, the symmetry is going to be a thing, so I'm going to go ahead and be a little cautious when it comes to the symmetry. So first, I'm going to eyeball it cover the outside shape and if you if anyone hears anything weird in the background I apologize there's some demolition going on around where I live so um, you know if you hear any noises um, apologize of course they wait ex uh, they explicitly wait for me to start live streaming to start using a chainsaw. So let's cover here. So I'm just gonna eyeball this before I get into the... Um... Hey, hey Misa, how are you doing today? Again, I'm sorry if you hear that noise. It's not me tooting, it's the chainsaw, I promise, in the background. Hey David Dowden, how are you doing? Welcome from all the way in New Orleans. Hey Mike Draw Paint. Uh, I must say, I have some, I have a surprise for everyone in this stream, but I'm gonna still wait a little bit longer till I introduce the surprise. Oh yeah, thanks for everyone that's leaving a like already. Look at that, we're already at 17 likes. Thanks everyone. So I'm going ahead and drawing with the negative shape. And again, this is going to be done in one sitting. So we're going to move rather quickly when it comes to drawing. And again, the uh, paint is thinned out a little bit with the solvent. I'm using distilled turpentine, but you can use whichever. I highly suggest spike lavender. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but that is my preferred solvent, hands down, at least these days. Hey, Misa, I'm glad that you're enjoying these live painting, uh, virtual painting sessions. A little bit more Venetian medium. And again, I, the sound is really bad for me right now where I'm at. There's a chainsaw. I promise you I'm not tooting away. It it sounds like it is, but <laughs> it's a chainsaw in the distance. Oh thank goodness that they stopped with the chainsaw. So just very basic drawing with the background. I'm using French umber from Rublev, which is also the same, also known as just raw umber and ivory black to draw. And the picture was taken in a cabinet. I just uh, put the, the glasses in a cabinet um, that has overhead lighting, soft overhead lighting. And it's just kind of ideal for these situations. So we're drawing away, moving quite quickly. Hey Stan, oh, I'm glad that the sound is perfect. Um, thanks for checking the sound. Yeah, they finally stopped with the chainsaw. So a little bit more of the French umber. And this time I have the non-fast drawing titanium white with me, so I'm gonna remember to place it out here. I just just went to the local art store today. So this is Winsor Newton titanium white. Uh, I have titanium white up here that I just put and I have flake white uh, down below. Hey Pam, I'm glad that you don't hear the chainsaw. Uh, luckily they stopped with the chainsaw.
So how is everyone liking the new setup? I know this is probably, I think, the third now video with the new setup, but I hope you're liking this setup. It's really awesome that you can see the uh, the comments. Could one use this technique to paint any glass objects, uh, i.e., uh, an example car uh, windshield? I think so. Uh, as long as you're working in Ala Prima, uh, I think that this is valid. And um, what you want to do with Ala Prima is actually start off a little bit darker and then increase with the lights, uh, paint in the lights. It's the opposite with classical. Um, so again, uh, those of you that are uh, taking my classes, um, uh, taking my online classes on Patreon, you, you know um, that we build uh, with the light, lighter layers first with classical. And again, I highly suggest the classical approach to anyone that is just beginning. Ala Prima, what we're doing today is very fast paced. Um, I, I dare say it's sometimes more fun, uh, but oftentimes more stressful, but it's very, very fast paced. And um, it just, it's easier to work darker, Stephen, um, and then put in the lights. Usually that's the case. Hey Fatima, I'm glad that you like to, to watch. Hey Arianis, um, hello there from Istanbul. Hey Gata, um, what are you featuring, uh, uh, features of the, the medium? Okay, the medium. This is Venetian medium. Uh, it is uh, made by Roblev. It is very similar uh, in handling to Neo Megilp um, from Gamblin. It's very similar to Winsor Newton's Liquin. They are uh, thixotropic uh, media, uh, gels, so they're solid until you apply motion to them. Um, but also, it just I like Venetian Medium by uh, Rublev because it thins out the paint, but it also kind of has a heavier texture to it. Uh, it feels like a heavier, um, I don't know, it, it just feels more solid than the other ones that I mentioned. It's made by Rublev. All right, so now let me go ahead and check with that uh, T-square. What are the dark colors on my palette today? So uh, I just used uh, French Umber by uh, the brand Rublev again, but uh, French Umber is the same as raw Umber. It's the same uh, pigment. I used French Umber and Ivory Black. So this is French Umber, Ivory Black, and this one right here that I didn't use yet is Ultramarine Blue. And again, if anyone is uh, curious about exactly what colors I'm uh, using, feel free to comment and I will list them out for you. No problem. Yep, no problem, got the... And I'm definitely going in with the darks, going strong with the darks. Is it perfect? Is it exactly where it is in the photo reference? Nope. Do I intend it to be? Nope. I'm just using the photo reference as a reference. And this is especially fun with still life, I must say. See how quickly we can move. Not that we've really done anything major yet, but we'll get there. It's filling in all of these important darks first. Alrighty, so we are now about to be almost 20 minutes into the stream. So I'll mention this once in a while. So the uh, surprise for Today, I want to incorporate something uh, new to the streams. Um, so, you ready? Uh, those of you, so this is going to be a reward for those of you that are um, uh, supporting the stream through the super chat. So, are you ready? Everyone ready? Ta-da! So this one is one of my, let me see if I can point. This is one of my recent still life paintings. It has been officially uh, photographed and documented. So anyone that wants to support the live chat through 
super chat through the super chat option. Uh, I will send this image, uh, this high resolution image of one of my recent uh, paintings, again, signed to the top left directly to you. All you have to do is email me and say, hey, I sent you a super chat the other day and I will send you this high resolution image of one of my recent still life paintings. Hooray! So that will be a reward for anyone that would like to send super chats. And everyone that has sent super chats already in the past, I will be um, sending this to you if you have sent me your uh, email because I do need your email. So sound good? I hope that you liked that little uh, glimpse into the um, one of my uh, recent still life paintings. So again, if you are watching and you've already sent a super chat in the past, please just contact me through my Gmail. If you don't know my Gmail, uh, I will just type it for you. So just feel free to ask me for the Gmail. And now let me go ahead and check the symmetry really quick as, uh, so we don't have any wine glasses that are kind of leaning off to the side. So this is one way to check your symmetry. So it appears that we're good. You want to check this is the center line. So you want to check that the corners match up. Now what I may have to do is move this over to the right. Uh, but center line wise, we should be good with this one. And these, I'll get to these later, but it's the main one that I'm more concerned about. So I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, put in a line of value. I'm using titanium white into here. I'm just going to paint it in there directly. So I know exactly where it is, where the center line is. That way there's no ambiguity for the center line of the wine glass. See how it kind of shifts everything a little bit? So this is just a little rule of thumb for everyone that is going to be doing the same still life. So I want to be very cautious with this. Um, I should have actually added a little bit of texture or thickness to this line. So I'm going to do it again. I'm definitely using the T-square a lot this time. There we go. So now we have the thickness of the wine glass. Hey, Misa. Okay, yeah, I will type my Gmail out for you. Yep, so Yupari the artist at Gmail dot com so anyone that has already sent a super chat in the past please send a message to me here uh, to my gmail and i will send you the um the image uh the high resolution image hey zoran welcome to the live stream i'm glad that you like the setup right now things are kind of messy as i'm starting to place uh, all of the elements and we're going to have a lot of fun with this wine glass. A lot of fun with this wine glass. Obviously, I'm going to have to recheck this. Once again, measure twice, cut once, right? All right, so now that's going to have to move slightly ever so slightly because I've done enough still life painting where something is leaning and we don't want to incorporate that unless it's part of the design yep no problem Fatima all right, let's double check this. I don't want anything to be leaning, so. Mark there. Mark there. All righty, so that gives us our symmetry. Now let's go ahead and go to town on our still life object. So first thing I'm going to do is set the range. I like to do these a little bit differently each time, and I'm using titanium white. 
Uh, this is Winsor Newton, the regular titanium white. I'll use flake white in the half tones, but I'll use uh, titanium white in the lightest lights. There's another half tone or bright light here. And we're probably going to end up painting over top of the highlights, but right now I'm just setting the range. And this has to have a little bit of light up here. I haven't painted with Winsor Newton, the regular Winsor Newton, in a long time, I must say. It has a very different feel to it than Old Holland and um, Williamsburg. It's a little more creamy uh, than Old Holland and Williamsburg. So that's something worth noting. And I'm going to need a violet for this. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-mix a violet color. So let's go ahead and get uh, the palette knife, mix a violet. So we have the, yep, just got your email. So I, I have the ultramarine blue here and the, um, the, uh, what, what should we call it? The alizarin crimson. So, yep. So anyone that has already sent a super chat in the past, uh, please feel free to send your, your, um, send an email to my Gmail. And those of you that would like to have um, an image of uh, my one of my recent still life paintings sent to you, um, and you don't mind supporting the stream, uh, the channel through Super Chat, uh, please feel free to help us out, and we'll send you a nice image. So I'm mixing up a nice violet here. Hey, hey, Steven. So you painted the Leaning Tower of Pisa and made it too straight. Oh, well. I don't want to turn this into the Leaning Tower of Wine Glass. It may end up happening, but <laughs> I'm going to try not to. I'm, I'm pre-mixing a violet here because I don't have a violet on my palette. And I'm just going to put this violet down here, off to the side. I'll probably refer to that violet later on. So let's now start to fill in some of these values. Very simple. We're starting on very simple, very abstract. And this is the fun. A lot of the fun with glass is um, the, the values that you surround the glass with, the highlights of the glass. Um, hey, Fadima, when can you use zinc white? So th that that's, an, uh, that's a really good question that I'm pretty sure everyone's going to talk about uh, soon about zinc white. So there's a lot of, um, you know, not so good and uh, stuff out there about zinc white. Um, you can use, uh, if you don't have access to flake white, this one that I almost always use for figurative painting, uh, I highly recommend Gamblin's flake white replacement um, for a mixing white. Uh, Gamblin's flake white replacement is uh, it's pretty good quality. Of course, nothing is really like flake white like this one, but it's pretty close substitute. The, one of the closest that I've tried. Um, but since no one has said anything yet, zinc white um, has been shown in recent tests to uh, kind of damage the paint film to your paintings. So. I used to use zinc white a lot in the past, but, um, you know, I've been kind of corrected uh, many times here on YouTube, so uh, currently not using zinc white. For instance, I'll give you an example with flake white here. Uh, I can use a lot of it. See this? A lot of it without raising the value all that much. Hey, uh, Alfred. Is drawing or painting easier for me? Um, you know, I consider it all drawing. So I consider painting uh, to be drawing with color. And I um, especially, this is especially true with portraiture. Um, drawing is the number one challenge uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, creating a portrait. And with still life, but still life has more painterly elements to it in my opinion so i'd say that they're about equal just because uh you know i, I consider painting to be drawing with color 
And there they go with the chainsaw again. Apologize. I must have a really good microphone then if you can't hear the chainsaw. Now we're going in with the light. Hey, Dark Clown. Um, yes, I can do another one with the, the traditional. Again, we still have that Van Dyke uh, portrait that isn't uh, completed yet. So we can do that for sure. Um, but again, it, it really won't be as long um, of a video again as my um, online classes. My online classes, for example, um, you know, one portrait painting project can have uh, about seven different videos, so seven different uh, seven hours at the least per classical painting. I can't really do that with YouTube just because of um, just uh, logistics uh, when it comes to the, uh, you know, when it comes to creating videos for the public. Hey, Steven. Would Winsor and Newton soft mixing white be a good replacement for, for flake? Uh, I did try their. Um, they call it they called it mixing white the last I heard, but um, I tried it once uh, from a friend's palette a long time ago, uh, and it didn't really have the thickness to it that um, the Gamblin's flake white replacement has. But it's still you know pretty close approximation. But you know, other other um, excuse me, other artists may uh, uh, think differently of it. It's just from my experience. Alrighty, let's see here. It's the Maryland Chainsaw Massacre. Probably there must be something going on with the chainsaws out there. Uh, so hey, Cat Zen Jammer. Hey, Ulfred, I find drawing easier because uh, you can always press harder to emphasize depth and shadows. Um, I, yeah, I see that. Um, but again, I, I kind of think of it as as drawing. So, you know, sometimes, so for instance, I can press lighter. See here? I can press lighter to have a lighter mark and darker to have a darker mark. I'll show you exactly what I mean with this passage. So this can be similar to, say, a charcoal drawing. See, pressing darker. Lighter down here. So it's lighter and then darker again over here. So you can have some painterly tricks that will mimic uh, somewhat uh, what it's like to draw with say charcoal so see that, uh, just uh, different pressure. Hey, Angela. Oh, thank you for your kind words. Gracias por atender me. How would you say live stream? Live stream. <laughs> I hope you will enjoy your stay with us here. So let's go ahead and start to put some of the um, kind of the purplish tones down there. Uh, I'm gonna get a different brush out, as you know. I like to switch brushes between um, you know different hues or different values. Now is where I should really be using flake white because I don't want to raise the value all that much. Hey, Troy Roberts. Would I be willing to explain a little about common mediums, uh, for example, spike lavender, and why, when you would add them? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yep, also, como estas? All right, let's do this. So, let's talk about spike lavender first, as I did mention it earlier. Um, as I put this uh, color in. So spike lavender is what I prefer. It's my preference as a solvent to thin out paint to draw. 
Uh, I'm talking about Spike Lavender. Spike Lavender has a pretty good history with uh, oil painting. Uh, it's been used for quite some time. Uh, Spike Lavender, depending on how you use it, you can use it both as a type of oil and a solvent. I recommend using it as a solvent and then mixing it into your, um, there goes the Maryland Chainsaw Massacre. You can um, mix it directly into your linseed, which is what I do, um, to basically uh, oil out in between layers, sparingly of course, with classical paintings. So for instance, um, right here I have my Spike Lavender. Unfortunately, this is about twice, if not three times the cost of this so this right here distilled turpentine I use distilled turpentine for the most part because it's cheaper than the spike lavender there are more health risks with this one with the distilled turpentine than there are with this one so if your concern is with the with your um, health and the air quality and all that stuff stick with spike lavender if that is your concern now, the reason I don't use odorless mineral spirits that much, I won't, I'm not saying I won't use it anymore. The reason I don't use it that much is because I, because I found that it kind of, it, it feels like it eats at the paint film. Now, in terms of other mediums, um, Venetian medium here is um, leaded powdered uh, glass with a little bit of wax and turpentine is what is in this. Uh, medium, so it does have a slight um, turpentine smell, which I, I don't mind, but um, it's just something to take notice of. It's thixotropic, which means it acts it it acts just like your gel mediums that you're used to, like liquin and um, neomegilp, so that uh, it's thixotropic, so it stays still until you move it around. See, um, now I prefer to use fast dryers when it comes to mediums as opposed to slow dryers. And that is just because I tend to work more classical than Alla Prima. But you can still use this for Alla Prima because an oil painting, even with liquid, won't dry on you uh, that quickly. I just found that it just doesn't dry that quickly. So uh, that's a little brief talk about mediums. Feel free to ask me any more questions about mediums. Um, so let's see, what have I missed? Hey, Angela, I'm glad that you're enjoying this. Um, lo que estaba hablando era de los uh, mediums. Me encanta este en particular, um, Venetian medium. Este la compañía uh, Rublev. Uh, Rublev um, es uno de mis, mis favoritos uh, compañías de, um, de mediums. So let's see, what have I missed? Uh, Ulfred, what is the hardest thing you painted? Oh yeah, I can definitely answer that. The hardest, um, uh, hardest thing I've ever painted, I guess I shouldn't call it a thing, is my fiance's mother. I painted her, uh, her portrait, Alla Prima, for YouTube. Um, I don't think it came out that well, but that was one of the most difficult paintings ever. Um, painting your significant other's, um, uh, parent, uh, live. But I, I mean, not like live like this, but as a live model. That is hard. I, that, that, I don't wish that on anyone. I don't wish that kind of stress on anybody. That had to have been the most difficult um, painting ever. Ever, 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 I'm telling you. All right, let's see here. What have I missed? Hey, Sam Doyle, how are you doing today? Welcome to the live stream. Hey, Dark Clown, when it comes to student paint, which brands would you recommend? Question mark. I want to experiment, but spend less money on artist painting. So Dark Clown 1560, I recommend four colors, not student grade if you want to experiment. I recommend um, Titanium White uh, and either Winsor Newton or Gamblin. Titanium White, it'll run you about what? What did I pay for this? Today I paid, I think about, I think about $8 for this, for the Titanium White Winsor Newton. So this one? Yellow ochre, again, Winsor Newton or Gamblin would be fine. Some type of cadmium red, um, this will run you probably maybe $20, but it's very much worth it. Ivory black will run you about $8. So you have like $8, $8, $8, $20 here. I recommend um, artist grade all the way um, when it comes to that. So dark clown, definitely. 
I would stick with those uh, four colors I recommended. And f please feel free to um, you know ask me any questions about why I recommend those colors. But um, everyone here will probably tell you why, and it's because it's the Zorn palette. The Zorn palette is a very economical palette, but it's one of the best palettes you can use um, for portraiture, and not just portraiture, I mean a lot of uh, paintings as well. So now let's just continue filling in this uh, wine glass. Let's see here. Um, Hey, Marisa, did she like the painting? Um, first of all, my uh, I'm like really good friends with my fiance's mother. So I personally don't think that she liked it. The painting wasn't framed and it was kind of put off to the side. So no, I don't think she really liked it. Um, and I mean, I, I did the best that I could, but um, I, I don't think I particularly got a good likeness of her in that painting. Let's see here. <laughs> Steven, what's up? Yeah, she's still talking to me. We're cool. We're cool. Um, yeah, especially now that, you know, we're, we're, we're getting married. So, um, you know, my, my fiance and, and I. Um, yeah, we're cool. It's just, you know, sometimes when you try to paint a portrait um, of someone that you know, um, it's just it's one of the most difficult experiences with painting you'll ever have very very difficult hey hard job what's up welcome yeah eight eight dollars yeah you know what i did you know what i did local art store man um local art store such as michael's use that 40 percent off and yeah eight dollars the titanium white i think it was even less um to be honest Welcome to the live stream, uh, Harja. And uh, Harja, I think we talked before on Instagram. I don't know if you know, I have um, online classes now on Patreon. Again, feel free to ask me anything about it during the stream. And to everyone watching, um, again, feel free to check out the community section. I posted the photo reference for this wine glass or these wine glasses. All right, let's see here. Hey, Angela, I'm glad you like the composition. Hey, Nelly. Um, painting the mother-in-law. Yeah, that's very difficult. That was very, you know, it wasn't stressful while I was painting. It was stressful during the breaks. Like during the modeling breaks, it was particularly stressful, I will say. Uh, yeah, um, I saw the video is on my channel. I think it's titled... Um, it was when this pandemic started. I think it was titled um, something about like how to paint a live model uh, in your home, in your own home or something, something along those lines. It was so long ago now, I barely remember. I remember the trauma of the painting experience, just not the, what I titled the video. Now let's sneak in some of those reddish colors for the wine glass. Need a different brush. Oh, let's see, what have I missed here? Hey, hard job. Yep, yeah, I'm still painting. I'm here in Beltsville, Maryland. I'm right here. I haven't gone anywhere. What have I missed? Hey, Louie, Louie. Is it hard to paint a portrait of someone you don't like? <laughs> um... Mm, yeah, it can be. Although I very, very rarely paint a portrait of someone I don't like. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can be a little... <laughs> Has anyone seen the Gauguin portrait of Cezanne? Because <laughs> those two were definitely going at it. Um, it it's pretty funny. I, I've never actually painted a portrait of someone that I really dislike. So I, it's kind of hard for me to answer that one. Uh, Dark Clown, 1560 In Mexico, the $8 paint may cost almost $30. Oh, okay. Well, then, um, when it comes to the more economical paints, then um, I'd say Winsor Newton. Uh, Winsor Newton, definitely. 
Winston Newton a little more than the Gamblin 1080 or whatever it's called. I think it's like, I don't know. I forgot what their student brand is, but um, so Dark Clown, I would stick with the Windsor brand for the uh, economical paints. Let's see, what else have I missed? Oh, wow, I have to scroll through the comments. I think I've missed a lot. Uh, hey, hard job. Uh, Paulden, oh yeah, Paulden's teaching at Micah, yeah. Uh, for everyone uh, wondering who Paulden is, he's um, one of my teachers of the past and uh, my one of my mentors when it comes to painting. Hey, Louis, Louis. Oh yeah, the scan, scamdemic, yeah. Uh, don't worry, hard job. I've mentioned Paulden's name uh, quite a lot. Hey, Angela Lopez. Uh, no es, no es tan difícil pintar, así es que hay que poner atención a los, uh, los, how do you say, los, los tonos y los colores, en particular uh, lo oscuro y lo no oscuro, <laughs> the light and the dark. Everyone's listening to me butchering Spanish. I apologize for the native Spanish speakers, which I am not. Uh, my Spanish is, it's, it's meh at best. But I try. All right, what else have I missed? All right, hey, Stephen. Boring question. What about that titanium white made in France? Most of Windsor paints we get in the UK are uh, Winton. What? Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Honestly, everyone listening... Um, if I'm going to be really honest, it's really worth the investment to get Williamsburg or um, Old Holland. I'll tell you what, Williamsburg is a little less expensive than Old Holland. Um, and you just get more uh, more bang for your buck, I think, when it comes to um, Williamsburg, in, in my opinion. Hey, Harjot, do I still talk to Kai? So we're talking about my old, my old buddies. So anyone uh, wondering what this conversation is about? Harjot is one of my buddies. Uh, we painted um, together during the uh, uh, figure painting sessions in, in um, Baltimore before the world ended. So Kai is one of my buddies also. And um, no, I haven't talked to Kai. I would like to talk to Kai. I think he's just been really busy. Uh, hey Angela, why the orange is is it why? <laughs> hey Angela, um, it's actually I didn't have any wine with me today, uh, so I poured. Um, this is actually um, peach cider, so there's a little bit of that kind of peach like color up here. So that's where this coloration is coming from. Let's see, what have I missed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's peach cider. It's not actual wine. Would have been nice to put actual wine in it, but I didn't have any. Hey David, oh eBay has a good selection of artist oil paints. I had no clue. So let's go to the comments and let's look at David's uh, comment here. So eBay has a good selection of artist oils. Pricing is friendly for the most part. I had no clue that they had those on eBay, but then again, I don't really, um, I usually just buy paints in person. Um, I either go to um, Plaza or I just go to Michael's. Now let me get a uh, dark brush. I'm kind of trying to get the shape of this. And how did I forget there's a cast shadow on the bottom? 
Let's see here. What have I missed? Hey, Harjot. Need to head up to Zola Studio once the corona um the corona is over. Yeah, I mean um so to everyone um listening, um so at Harjot mentioned the school Zola Studio. That is the school in Timonium that I studied with uh, my buddy Paulden um uh, in Timonium, Maryland. I believe he's still a uh, teacher there. Although I haven't really spoken to my uh, my painting buddies in a while, except for um, Karen Warshall, who's a wonderful artist as well. In case anyone wants her info, you can feel free to ask me. So I'm putting in this cast shadow. I may have to actually move the platform uh, down a little bit. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the platform down. So let me go ahead and do that now before I forget. Hey, Mohammed, what's up? Welcome to the live stream. Um, how to know if the oil paint is not high, high quality? Um, let's see. Uh, if, if you, okay, if you open a paint tube, like if you go to the store, right, you open the paint tube, and you look into the paint tube. You can push out here a little bit. See, it's, I'm pushing in the middle. If it starts to leak, like there's a lot of oil, then that's probably not the best. It might have too much oil, unless we're talking Rublev. Rublev, you can trust pretty much any time, but when it comes to other store-bought paints, uh, and just make sure it doesn't leak too much. So this is good. Press onto the sides and it should go, see that? If you press onto the sides, the paint retreats back into the tube. So that's a way that you can check whether or not um, the integrity of the paint's good. Now, if you want to look at a high quality example, um, here's a old Holland yellow ochre. So if I open this and push, see it's it's super thick. Like it's it's incredibly thick, no leakage or anything. And again, press onto the sides and the paint retreats back into the tube. So that's just a little trick there. So you can check um, check the quality or the oiliness of your paints. Hey Troy, what was the quote from the other day? Thin paint sticks onto thick paint. Yeah, that's a Bob Ross quote. Um, Bob Ross would say, uh, thin paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. Yep, that's the quote. Um, so Harja, where is uh I think we're talking about Karen. She's she's in her home. She's in her uh home studio. What was I gonna do? I'm gonna lower the platform a little bit. Lowering the platform. It's very important to use T-squares, everyone, for still life. It just, it saves you a lot of time, to be honest. And if anyone asks, you drew it freehand. <laughs> In case anyone asks, it, it was freehand. Got it? Good. Hey, Jose, Visca, how are you doing? I hope everyone's doing well on this Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. I, in particular, really enjoy Mondays. <laughs> I guess most people don't, but I do. I tend to say every day is like a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities. But every Monday is also like a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities. There's so much that can be done and accomplished during the week. Henceforth, that is why I really enjoy Mondays. I get to wake up in the morning, teach my uh, teach my online class, um, do some more computer work in the afternoon, and then get to spend the evening with everyone here. So, henceforth, ergo, Mondays are awesome. Hey, Alma. Thanks for the, the saludos de Mexico. Welcome to the live stream. Hey, Gata. 
Here the Flake White is banned. Oh, I have unfortunately heard that Flake White is banned everywhere. Um, what is what do you think is better to use the titanium white or the flake white substitute? I have them both to be honest Unless you're strictly doing portrait if you're strictly doing portrait just use gamblin flake white replacement um, I don't have it here. I have the actual flake white uh, Williamsburg um, But I have found the best results from gamblin's uh, flake white replacement uh, for those of you that don't have access to flake white I'm gonna get a different brush. I'm actually gonna get a new brush out for y'all. What do you think? It's got some dust on it, but <laughs> new brush again, just from Michaels. I don't. I'm not trying to. You know, I'm not paid by Michaels to say this. It's just that's where you get the forty percent off. Hey, Misa. Uh, I try to keep a positive mindset for the most part. Hey, Jose uh, Visca. I'm glad that my videos relax you. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for joining the stream. Awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying this. Hey, Pablo, what's up? Yay. <laughs> oh, right. So now that we're we're all here, I'm going to do this once again. I'll do this from time to time, maybe every 20 minutes or so. Uh, so I have a surprise for everyone. So everyone that's just signed on to the stream, I got a surprise for you. You ready? You ready? You're not ready for this. I don't think you're ready for this. Are you sure? Okay. So check this out, check this out. This is one of my recently completed still life paintings. For anyone that would like to support the channel or support the live stream um, through the super chat, if you send any super chats to the stream, you will get an image, a JPEG, high resolution JPEG of this recently completed 2020 still life painting as a reward. Or if you've sent a super chat in a previous super chat uh, send me your emails uh, if you don't have my email just go ahead and ask me for my email and you will get this high resolution picture as a reward for your super chat so anyone that would like to send super chats in the future you will be rewarded with a high resolution image of one of my recent still life paintings this is an 8x10 still life painting that i named nature versus nurture so just in case anyone would like to help out. Now let's get back to this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start to paint the platform, the color of the platform I'm using French umber. French umber, let's see, what do we do? Let's try this out. And honestly, um, this is, I consider this a group effort because Everyone here, everyone sending uh, questions, uh, chatting, communicating uh, with us. You know, you you are, you know, you're where the party's at. Like you're making these live streams come to life. It's not just me. I'm over here painting and talking, right? I could just be painting and talking and blah 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 blah. But everyone here makes these live streams special. So all of you, every single one of you, even. Even those of you that haven't spoken up yet or haven't said anything through the chat. It's okay. I sense your presence and I'm very happy that you are here. So, painting in the bottom platform. Does it look like the image? No. Do I care? No. What I'm doing is I'm creating a painting and not a perfect photographic copy of the image. Hey Pablo, um, uh, I'm, I don't know if we can answer these questions. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a YouTube live chat. Uh, you, you, you can definitely uh, talk to me about things like that through the, uh, the Gmail or the Patreon. But those are the kind of things that will get me demonetized, so I wouldn't. Let's see here. So any more questions? So now we're actually going to be ready to move into... 
uh, another one of the glasses. I have some options here, either this one or this one. I think we'll get into this one just because it's so different. And when you're painting a triple Ala Prima, so three things at once, then you really have to move pretty fast. So we're going to be kind of flying through this. Hey, Harjot. Uh, I didn't say that, but I, I cannot say anything about that. Again, there's, you know, the YouTube. The YouTube bots are after us. Let's see here. Hey, Nelly, what number of uh, brush am I... Okay, what is this? This is a size 8 Simply Simmons. Size 8 Simply Simmons. Why do I keep getting these questions? You're going to get me demonetized. Slick. Um, yeah, let, let's talk about painting. Let's talk about colors and shapes and values. Dondo, where are you? <laughs> I need my moderator. All right, so now I'm going to paint the cast shadow from this one, from this glass. Hey, Dave. Um, yeah, I set up the still life. Um, I chose to have this glass overlap this one, uh, kind of a glass with something filled. So I guess what's the term? What's the positive way to look at it? Half full and then one that is empty, but uh, kind of opaque-ish. And then one that's kind of in the background. So yes, I did set this up. Hey Pam, uh, let's see. The shadow on the left of the middle glass. Uh, yeah, I could, um, you know, put the shadow on this one a little bit more accurately. But right now I'm kind of just moving along. But yeah, we'll look into that. Hey, Louis, Louis, uh, you have a purple piece of fabric tried to paint as a backdrop. Could not reach the purples. Um, so when it comes to purple, honestly, the color, uh, the, there's the best purple you can get, I think, is from ultramarine blue and, um, and uh, alizarin crimson lake extra. So we're adjusting the shadow shape before we get into the specifics of this glass. <laughs> hey, Dark Clown. Okay, let's not get me to monetize. Dondo, where are you? All right, let's just paint. Oh, you're on season three of Gotham, Dave. Awesome. I think I only watched like one season of that. All right. So now let's go ahead and start to put in some of the specifics with this glass. I'm going to start off with the middle gray. Hey, Harja, Harja, you want to become the, the moderator? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd have to talk about it with uh, my uh, current moderator, Dondo. I don't know. But I think, honestly, that was a joke, Harja. I, I don't think we have to worry. But I mean, um, you know, sometimes with the streams, we'll get some some comments that we have to watch out for. But for now, we should be fine. So thank you, Harjot. You should be good. So I'm starting off with the middle gray. And 
Now let's get the lighter, lighter gray. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Arja. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's. It's okay. Everyone, it's, it's fine. Let's just talk about uh, painting. So a light color here, a light bluish tone. For the still life. Hey, Steven. Whew, thank you for that question. Um, can you talk about how you would approach this in a classical sa slash traditional way? Um, yeah, so for a classical slash traditional start to this painting, um, number one, I wouldn't be throwing in color, any color this quickly. Um, if I were to start this in the classical approach, uh, similar to how I do my uh, portraits, what I do is I um, I would do an umber drawing. So just like with each portrait that I've done, you know how I title it uh, umber layer, umber sketch. I would do the exact thing, uh, exact same thing. And then the second layer, I would go in with a uh, grisaille. So a monochromatic underpainting. But with still life, it's a little different because you don't have to be as uh, exacting, in my opinion, with the uh, drawing, just in my opinion. Um, no, this isn't cobalt blue. This is uh, ultramarine blue. Uh, yeah, ultramarine blue. Hey, Pablo, I hope you're still with us. Yeah, don't worry about these... Uh, the, the conversations that YouTube may flag us for. So Pavlo, p please feel free to ask anything uh, painting related or I don't know, pet related. <laughs> I'm also very into uh, pets. I watch uh, a lot of the pet YouTubers here on you know, YouTube. So feel free to ask me what YouTubers I watch. Nobody has asked me that one yet. So in case anyone's curious as to which YouTube channels I like to watch, I can tell you. So now we have this dark blue. Hey, Harja. Oh, wow, you have uh, Siberian Huskies. I'm trying to keep track of the conversation here. Um, so, Stephen, how many layers do you think it would take um, doing it that way? Uh, set me a challenge. So, Stephen, as we talked about with the online classes um, with Patreon, um, so I sent you a sample. Anyone that's interested in my online classes and a little bit on the fence whether or not to do it, uh, please email me. I can send you a sample. So, Stephen... The sample that I sent you, that was about, I think, eight layers for that painting. Including uh, toning the canvas, so our panel. I think that was a canvas. So eight layers, Stephen. About eight layers. Hey, Troy. Uh, such a bold highlight on that middle glass. Do you reserve just pure white for a tiny portion of it? Uh, so that was actually here. Uh, so this is a little bit deceptive, Troy. So um, I think we're talking about these lights. So let me clean off the palette knife. It's not straight uh, titanium white. It's a little bit deceptive. So it, see this? See how bright this is? Uh, so it depends on what you surround your highlights with. But I have not used straight titanium white for anything. Uh, I'll tell you what though, you can do something like this, a little bit of color, so a little bit of ultramarine blue, and you can get the brightest highlight possible that's still not titanium white, like straight titanium white, so check this out. And now that's like super bright, 
Uh, very appropriate, but it's not the brightest white. It's not straight titanium white, as you see here. So that's just a little values trick. Let's see here. Hey, Juan Pedro. Uh, do I know Asumu, Asumu Obi? I don't think I do. Hey, Dave B. Yeah, I can talk about which YouTubers I, I like to watch in a second. Dark Clown 15 is there anything I can do if the paint outside of the tube is too oily? Yes, uh, Dark Clown, there is something you can do. Um, what you can do is take off the top of the cap, put in a tiny portion of paper towel, put it into the tube just slightly, and it'll turn into a wick. Leave it there overnight or something like that, and it'll actually drain some, not all, but some of the excess oil. So that's a little tip for that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Clint, uh, I'll definitely talk about uh, YouTubers that I watch. Starting out with someone named Clint, actually. Let's start it out. Let's start it out. I'll type their names for you, and then I'll talk about it. So I'm just typing out the names of the YouTubers that I watch for you. There is quite a lot of them. All right, so these are the top YouTubers that I like to watch. Um, starting off, Clint. So we're starting off with Clint's Reptiles. Okay, so that, so here we go. Clint's Reptiles is one of my favorite YouTube channels ever. Chris Hardwick is one of my favorite YouTube channels. He is a uh, he's a daily YouTuber actually. Um, these are all pet YouTubers, by the way. So Chris Hardwick, um, the Dark Den uh, over here under here, uh, one of my favorite ones. Tarantula Dan, another favorite one. Tarantula Cat, another favorite. Camp Cannon, who is really cool to watch. Uh, he has like almost a re like really professional broadcast. Exotics Lair is an action-packed uh, tarantula channel. So if you're into the action-packed um, YouTube videos where there's like things jumping at you and stuff, Exotics Lair. But to be honest, Chris Hardwick, um, this one right here, is one of the uh, YouTube channels I like to watch all the time. He posts new videos pretty much every day, um, and mainly based on ball pythons, which are the pets that I have. I have two ball pythons, and two bearded dragons, and a bunch of tarantulas. So just in case you're wondering. So now getting back into this, I'm gonna go into the highlights. So just so you can know a little bit more about me and uh, some of my interests outside of art while we're doing art. So um, Stephen, your question you asked before was a really good question. Um, so if I were to be doing this uh, in the classical style, I would definitely reserve um, what I'm doing now for about the third to fourth layer, uh, Stephen. So that's how I work in, my, um, in the classical approach with portraiture mainly. Um, but I do uh, use the classical approach for still life once in a while. It's just I'm not really that much of a fan of a super, super finished still life. I like the still life to be a little more expressive. Yep, Clint. Yep, definitely. Um, hope you like the list. I hope I didn't forget any. I probably did forget at least one channel, but. But I mean, um, yeah, Chris Hardwick, that YouTube channel, that's the one I watch like breakfast, lunch, dinner, any anytime I'm like just kind of not doing anything. So again, anyone, uh, feel free to ask me. Uh, hey, David Downen, I just got your... Uh, email. Yeah, of course, I can send you um, 
some information, some more information on the online classes. Uh, once the stream ends, David, I can send you a message. Hey, uh, hey, Michelle. How long do I have to wait uh, between layers? Okay, so that depends on how I'm working. And if I'm working in the classical approach, uh, which is not what I'm doing here, uh, if I'm working in the classical approach, then I'd say a good uh, three days just to be safe. And when I work classical, I don't paint this thick. This is very thick um, paint. I might not be able to see it um, just because of the you know camera and stuff, but uh, usually about three days is what I wait. But I tell you what, the um, the Ala Prima can get the effect of a highly finished classical painting for still life uh, really fast. So I, I pretty much only use classical these days uh, for portraiture. Rarely will you see me do an Ala Prima still life or um, Ala Prima portrait these days. I can do it. I mean, if you request it. Let's see. Hey, Harjot. Uh, the online classes are ten dollars a month for all of the lessons, access to all of the lessons, and virtual classrooms. It's $10 a month. Um, there's also a $20 a month option, which is, uh, of course, optional. It's live stream uh, tier, so you can watch the lessons uploaded live every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But once the stream ends, the pre-recorded video then becomes a, um, a lesson that every online student can see. So uh, the online class is, again, just $10 a month. Let's see here. Uh, hey, Harjot. Uh, no, I don't use Zoom because I can't really get a higher quality image like this uh, with Zoom. I can stream. It is possible for me to stream uh, to Zoom, but from what I've found, it's it's just not as uh, friendly with a higher resolution from, from what I've found. I mean, you know, what I've read online. Let's see. Hey, Juan, uh, Pedro Gonzalez. How do you talk to, uh, or wait, how do you talk to you without uh, taking the course? Um, so about taking the course, if you would like to send me, if you're interested, uh, please check out. Huh? The live was canceled. No, no, I didn't cancel this one. You may have read the post from before. Uh, I did have to cancel one last time because my hard drive broke, but I replaced it. So if um, so, if you don't mind checking, um, those of you that are asking about the online classes. If you don't mind checking, oh, thank you, Nelly. Uh, if you don't mind checking uh, patreon.com slash artist, I have all of the information typed up there for you for the uh, about the online classes, again, at $10 a month. But again, you can also just send me an email if you're on the fence, if you're still, you don't know, if you want to take the class, and I can send you a sample lesson. So just email me for a sample lesson. 
if you are curious. And for still life, you really have to squint. And um, sometimes you really just want to paint what you see uh, when you're squinting. Hey, hey, procrastinator. What's up? Oh, thank you. Whoops, that goes the wrong brush. So, um, so for those of you that are asking about the, uh, hey, Velocam, thank you. What was your most time consuming painting? The, the Explorer. Uh, so the, um, back when I was filming these videos daily, uh, as pre-recorded videos, uh, there was a series of videos, uh, corresponding to, uh, what I call the Explorer. It's a painting, uh, of a, a bearded fella leaning on a table, looking at a book. There's a globe in it, all kinds of still life stuff. I think that painting took me about, I don't know, two months, three months. And it was painted also in the classical style. I think that's almost three years ago. That It's a long time ago. So now I'm gonna to start to put these little uh, details When I'm squinting, I see these details, but they're not as evident. So what I'm going to do is put them in and then blur them. So now I'm going to blur them with a fan brush. Hey, Gabby, BB. Oh, you did watch The Explorer. Yeah, that's definitely my most time consuming one. Oh, you remember it too, Steven? Yeah. That was definitely the most time consuming one, definitely. Because if you recall, that one had a compositional study. It had a portrait study. It had a video. Uh, you know, the funny thing about that painting, that's <laughs> the video featuring the canvas when I was toning the canvas got more views than the entire series by itself. <laughs> so if if you see thumbnails with the blank surface that's why for some reason um that's just the way it works with youtube i i really don't know for the life of me i don't know so now squinting 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 i need to put more light here only some of these details will be put into light Hey, procrastinator. Oh, thank you. How long have I been oil painting Alexander and uh, Clint? Uh, you ever premix your colors? So, yeah, let's get to these questions. Thank you so much for your questions. Um, I have been painting Alexander since 2009, so 11 years. Uh, 11 years classically painting. Of course, when I was a kid, I would always draw Dragon Ball Z. Shout out to anybody that knows what I'm talking about with Dragon Ball Z. I would always draw that when I was in middle school. Um, and do I ever premix my colors, Clint S? Yep, this one right there. That violet I premixed with the ultramarine blue and the alizarin uh, crimson lake extra. Let's see if I missed anything. Hey, Art House, the online classes are still, are still live figured over, uh, for this, at the moment, they're portrait, um, but I am going to incorporate still life landscape a la prima, um, Basically everything. But for now, the lessons are, um, the lessons are portrait classical. But I will start to bring in um, a la prima with still life, like this. Like I, I fly through a lot of steps with these virtual painting sessions. Uh, for an online lesson, I would take everything uh, step by step. This is not uh, as step-by-step. Step. This is uh, Fast Furious. 
Because we gotta get things done. You remove your spectacles to squint? Yeah, that works. That works. I mean, I got glasses too, everyone, so <laughs> that actually helps me as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Doreen. Oh, no problem. No, don't worry. We got a lot. We still have a lot to do. Don't worry, Doreen. Oh, awesome. No, I don't know who uh, Morgan Weisling is. I apologize. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. Hey, Zoran, uh, the St. Jerome writing. Oh, it, um, so it was actually uh, inspired by, I think it was the St. Jerome by uh, Caravaggio. Yeah, that's the one that took forever. Hey, Art House. Oh, yeah, I'll let you know when we put in the still life. Yeah, no problem. No problem. All right, Amanda, what inspires me to paint? Uh, this very uh, environment. Um, being able to combine painting and technology. So uh, to be more specific, combining painting and video in such a way that everyone uh, benefits from it or that others may benefit from it uh, is my inspiration, really. In the past, I was very inspired, and I still am very inspired by... Um, you know, uh, John Singer Sargent, Nelson Shanks, John William Waterhouse, all of these painters of the past. But I don't want to live my life trying to recreate what other artists have done in the past. Um, you know, there's a lot of really, really, uh, you know, strong, classically trained painters out there. But what I want is to combine this art form of uh, representational painting and video in such a way uh, that I create another type of art form with it that others may benefit from. That's my inspiration to be able to do this pretty much nearly every day um, and to survive like that. Lately, that's my biggest motivation. Let's see here. What did I miss? What did I miss? Hey, Doreen. What would I suggest? Uh, to Okay, so to begin my... Uh, the, to begin the sessions, you mean this? Um, so for this or the online classes, I would suggest panels. Um, this right here is a panel. Although sometimes I work on uh, linen canvas or cotton canvas, but panels I suggest... Um, I usually will suggest higher quality paints and wooden panels over, um, say, expensive brushes. I don't really use too many expensive brushes. Um, what matters, in my opinion, is the support that you paint on and the oil paints. And I have a, in the description box of this video, I have the um, materials list. So if anyone's interested in what materials I'm using and or would like to purchase the same type of materials, um, 
using from Amazon. Uh, please check the description box of this video. Or just ask me. I mean, just ask me anything. If you're curious about uh, what color I'm using specifically and why, go ahead, ask. I got you. Let's see here. How did I paint the wood? Or just, I don't think I painted the wood yet. Um, this is just uh, yellow ochre, cadmium red, vermilion, gamboge, so like extra, and perhaps a little bit of flake white, but I haven't painted the wood yet. Uh, Doreen, yep, yeah, for the online classes, definitely um, I would suggest uh, to use either a... The most important thing, Doreen, is the panel. Um, so if you purchase any wooden panel uh, from... Uh, what's the brand name? Uh, ampersand. Ampersand Gesso Board. I have links in the description box for that. And... Pretty much any oil paints, to be honest, uh, you can get started with the online classes. And Doreen, um, I also have a video uh, featuring specific materials, um, a video lesson. So Doreen, if you are interested in a free sample of the uh, online classes, please send me an email and I can send you as a sample the video featuring specific materials for one of the projects that is actually applicable to all of the projects when it comes to painting Doreen. So definitely feel free to email me. If you don't have my email, just go ahead and ask and I can type it out for you. Hey Art House, the cadmium red vermilion is, yeah, it is, it is a little expensive, but um, you can opt for cadmium red light also, it's very similar, uh, from either Gamblin or Windsor. Hey Oscar, what's up? Hello from England. Hey, Clint, uh, am I not surviving from my work? You mean selling my paintings? Uh, Clint, so currently I am kind of uh, creating inventory, as artists, some artists will say. Um, so currently there are none of my paintings available just yet uh, for purchase. My main thing really is um, YouTube and Patreon uh, in terms of online classes. So no, I haven't been, uh, I haven't put any new paintings for sale quite yet. I will though. Hey Amanda, I'm from, I'm from Beltsville, Maryland, here in the U.S. Um, yep, born and raised here in Maryland. Doreen, yeah, no problem, no problem. I'll type my email out for you. So it is upari, the artist at gmail.com. So this is also for anyone else that is um, interested and uh, interested in the classes and would like a sample lesson. Doreen, please, when you email me, make sure to... Uh, just type something about the materials, and I'll, I'll know exactly which uh, sample lesson to send you. So there is my Gmail again, anyone that is interested in a sample lesson. I can definitely do that for you. All right, so let's get to some more values. Why not? So ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue, ivory black. My online classes also offer mentorship tier images, mentorship tier constructive critiques. 
which are uh, in addition to your images that you can send me. By the way, in the classes, you can send me images each week for uh, images of your projects each week to be in the virtual classroom, which is also every week um, of any of the projects that you're working on or any of the uh, extracurricular activities, which are extracurriculars are paintings that you did painting along with me. So painting with any of my pre-recorded videos. On top of that, each month you get to send me an image of an original artwork of yours for the mentorship constructive critique for the uh, in the uh, virtual classroom. So there's quite a lot um, involved in the online classes. Now I'm slowly but surely walking my way up here. And I recommend having a lot of different uh, colors. What's my favorite color, Stephen? And Stephen has just begun the first crowd question. Thank you, Stephen. Let's have let's introduce a crowd question. Why don't we? So my favorite color. Whoops! I forgot the uh, one of the letters in red. So Stephen, my favorite color right now is cadmium red vermilion. Uh, Harjot, I think this may be your first time here with us. Go ahead, type your favorite uh, color, favorite oil paint, or just favorite color. Uh, everyone else, I, everyone that's uh, been here before, um, please feel free to join in as well. Everyone that is new, again, um, we usually have crowd questions. So thank you, Stephen, for introducing the first crowd question. Uh, so go ahead, fire away. What are your favorite colors to use, or favorite color? I want to see 84 responses. I see 82, okay, 82, I guess, uh, okay. So 82 of us. I want to see 82 comments, 82 different, or 82 colors. And if somebody said your favorite color, it's okay, just say it again. The variety is wonderful, but also we learn many different things from everyone here in the audience. Prussian blue, awesome, Steven. I don't know why YouTube tried to hold that one for review. Yeah, Prussian blue. Why is everyone, okay, the YouTube is acting weird. So April coming in with Prussian blue. For some reason, the algorithm doesn't like Prussian blue. Hey, Harjot, uh, wanna troll your the Zoom? Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Uh, you can certainly email email us Alrighty, so uh, April coming in with Stephen Jinx is that a color Clint S Coming in with a very uh, simple answer. I guess titanium white or flake white or cremnance. Well, Clint, which one? Titanium white, flake white, cremnance white, mixing white. Alexander coming in with gray. Is it Payne's gray or which, which gray? Alrighty, come on everyone, I want to see 86 different answers. Feel free to type your favorite oil paint color or your favorite color. I want to see 80, all 86 of us. Hey Steven, Thalo Green is a close, Thalo Green. Wow, Th Thalo is a really strong color. That's a color I think that will definitely uh, put you on a chokehold. But if you can use it for landscape, yeah, thalo green and thalo blue, definitely. Good choice, Stephen. Uh, 
April coming in with Oxford Blue. Awesome. Hey, Art House. You don't know how to type it, but it's a... I don't... Oh, let's see here. Irritant thin blue. Irid, okay. A type of blue. Uh, gotcha. So we're definitely learning many different colors. Hooker's green. I think I've heard of that one, too. Hey, Zoran. Cobalt blue. Coming in with cobalt blue. That is wonderful. Anyone heard of the cobalt blue tarantula? <laughs> That's what I think of. Uh, awesome choice. Awesome choice. Cobalt blue is a very good blue. Expensive. A really good blue. Let's see here. Gabby, BB, that's a hard question. I don't have a favorite color, but definitely have been using titanium white more than any other for years. Solid, solid, I answer. Thank you. The Michigan Traditional Indigo. All right, that's a good color. Indigo is a very, it's almost similar to Gamboge, like extra from what I remember. It's just a little, I think it has more tinting power in Indigo, if that's what I'm thinking. I may be lost. No, I am lost. Indigo is blue. I'm thinking of Indian yellow. I have had, in, uh, I think, indigo, the bluish color. Now, before long, I got to put in this reflected light. Let's do it. All righty, let's see here. Louis Louis coming in with cadmium red. Really, really solid choice. Can't go wrong with that one for pretty much everything. Red is one of the most important colors, I think, of the primary colors. Ronald Miller coming in with lemon yellow. Yep, I used to use uh, lemon yellow. I really uh, enjoyed using lemon yellow. That is a solid answer awesome michael saxton what's up cobalt turquoise light now that is a really good answer right there i have had that color before cobalt turquoise i missed that color actually especially uh cobalt teal i missed that one too yeah d michigan i yeah i mixed that one up indigo is similar to prussian blue and i did i think i still have that tube i do have indigo it's a bluish color. Yeah, I've misread it. Let's see here. Susanna, what's up? Coming in with Tierra Rosa for portraits and cobalt teal for impact. You know, we're getting a lot of cobalt teals. That um, Cobalt teal is uh, quickly becoming a very popular color here. It's a very nice and uh, bright blue. Well, let's see. I want to see everyone's responses. Clint S. Fancy. Coming in with Creminence White. Awesome. Doreen. What's up? Quinacridone Rose. That's really good for uh, floral paintings and paint paints gray. Awesome. Dark Clown 1560. Earthy colors. It's hard to choose one. If I were to choose an earthy color, I would probably choose uh, uh, Venetian Red. If I were to choose one. Or sap green. Poople, awesome response, my foot. Hey, Pablo GZZ. Uh, right. I'm glad that you like the, uh, I like that you like the uh, videos. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Iridescent blue. Oh, Steven, you're right. I think that was iridescent blue that someone commented earlier. Yep, during, yeah, cobalt blue, I agree. It's a wonderful color for sure. What am I missing here? I'm missing some of the uh, fine detail for this glass. Hey, Harjot. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's all. We're okay, Harja. You should read some of my uh, uh you should read some of my uh, YouTube comments. Somebody once compared one of my paintings to their like scrambled eggs or something. That's pretty hilarious. Oh, thanks, my foot. The Michigan, does painting portraits make your palette more subdued, unsaturated? It depends. It depends. Um, in general, I think the tendency with portraiture is to, um, is to actually oversaturate. From what I've seen, uh, the tendency for portraiture is to oversaturate. So portraiture kind of teaches you a lot in terms of um, you know, how to carefully control uh, your uh, hue value chroma. Let's see here. Alrighty, Gabby BB, have you ever oil painted a Dragon Ball Z painting? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, it would be interesting, though, for, like, Halloween or something to dress up a model as, like, uh, as a, I'd say Dragon Ball Super. Like, dress them up as, like, uh, uh, Goku, like, I'd say Super Saiyan Blue or maybe Super Saiyan God, the red form. Or Khalifa, the... Yeah, the female Super Saiyan. That would be cool. Whoops, dropped my brush. Hey, Art House. Well, I'm glad you uh, enjoyed the live stream. Have a good night. Yep, it'll definitely be a pre-recorded video once it's uploaded. Hey, Ronald Miller. What are your four favorite colors to use for the Zorn color palette for portrait? Oh, yeah, I can talk about my four favorite colors for the Zorn palette. Yeah. Yeah, hard job. Yeah, you want to dress as Vegeta? Yeah, I'll paint a portrait of you. You want to dress up as Vegeta? It has to be Super Saiyan Blue. Those are my favorites. Amanda, I think my favorite anime is um, One Piece. Let's see. So my favorite four colors for the Zorn palette. Uh, lead white, definitely. Uh, Williamsburg flake white. Uh, Old Holland, uh, yellow ochre deep. Williamsburg, cadmium red, uh, vermilion. Williamsburg, ivory black. Those are my four favorite colors for the Zorn palette. It's an ideal color. Um, it's an ideal color palette for portrait painting for not just uh, beginners, but uh, pretty much every level. Now that I have all this, I'm going to start to paint in the platform. So please feel free to continue sending questions, comments, anything on your mind. Yeah, hard job. Yeah, One Piece is awesome. I, I watched, like, all of it up until, like, the last, I don't know, like, last... I don't know, 20 episodes or something with my fiance. And then we caught up to it. Like, we caught up to where it currently is and then we stopped watching it because I didn't want to wait. You know, Hard Jot, Hard Jot, um, my two bald pythons are named after One Piece characters. Uh, my one, uh, Hard Jot, my one uh, bald python, my older one is named Zoro. The, um, the younger one is named Luffy, and soon, this weekend, I'm going to get Nami at the uh, Reptile Expo. So um, there's going to be a Reptile Expo uh, hard shot in uh, Baltimore. Timonium, actually, right by Zola Studio. I'll be there this weekend on Sunday. In case anyone is in the Baltimore area and wants to hang out, it's called Repticon. Oh, wow. 
Hey, D. Michigan, you cringe every time I say lead white. Yeah, lead white is like, it's like an oil painter's way of living that fast life. <laughs> but you kind of don't, you don't need it as much if you, if you uh, don't use too much titanium white, you can, you can get away with, you know, never using uh, any kind of lead white if it, you know, if it's a health concern for you. Hey, Amanda. Your favorite is Naruto? I don't think I've seen Naruto. Oh, hard job. <laughs> They're so friendly. Uh, ball pythons are so friendly. They get a bad reputation, but... Um, for instance, my, my ball python Zoro is a million times more friendly than uh, my uh, my mother's two cats. Those two cats want to kill me when they see me. They see me as like a food item. But I know that I know some lovely cats. My cousins have a very friendly cat. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Siri, I am not talking to you. She's so rude. Siri, I'm not talking to you. Okay. Thank you. So rude. Um Let's see. Um Yeah, hard job. I, I yeah, I wouldn't put that comment there. No worries, buddy. Oh yeah, Zor. Oh yeah, Zoran. You're, yeah, the names are actually really similar. <laughs> So uh, when it comes to edge quality and platforms with still life, I almost always, always uh, will push this edge back. The furthest uh, edge of the platform here, I kind of turn it into like a ghost-like edge by mixing wet on wet and letting the paint drag across. So, um, let's see, is there any, <laughs> hey, Dark Cloud, yeah, I can show this comment, yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> let's see here, yeah, hard job, yeah, I think so too. I won't throw any spoilers there for you, hard job. See how I'm slowly pushing this edge away? And I'm gonna cover the rest of this and then return to the main elements of this composition. Thriller arc, I don't know if I remember that one. The last thing we end up ended up with, uh, the last arc I was in, I think, uh, was uh, at uh, the Big Mama arc, I think, Harja. But in any case, um, so are there any technical questions in terms of painting anyone would like to ask me as I paint in the uh, platform here? Hey Nelly, I just got your email. Yep, I'll send you a sample. So again, anyone interested in the classes and a little on the fence whether or not my classes are, are something that you're interested in, uh, please feel free to send me an email and I can send you a sample lesson. And now, of course, an important thing is to bring the T-square back out. All right, Harja, thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you enjoy your uh, the psychology class. Awesome. I took psychology 102, I think, in college. Hey, Amanda. 
Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad that uh, the live stream is, is going to, or is helping you sleep. I've heard for some reason my videos are, are good sleeping aids, so feel free. Now let's go ahead and sturdy up the platform. Look at that, freehand, completely freehand. Now we want to put a pretty sharp edge for the bottom of this. Actually, what I'm going to do before I do that is uh, put a little more kind of uh, texture to the wood. Changing the color up a little bit. Just let some. I'm just letting some of the brush strokes kind of roam free. So I'm going to grow the platform a little bit more than um, what you see in the photo reference. Whoops, that was a mistake. All right. Now let's get the other brush. Hey, Roven. I'm glad you like the violet hues. Um, to be honest, I really enjoyed these um, public live streams. I really enjoy everyone's questions, and it brings a whole new aspect to um, painting videos. You know, it's you know we're human beings, and uh, it it really puts the human being aspect into these videos. I really enjoy this. So let me put this in first, then I'll get to some comments. There we go. Simple as that to paint a platform. Doesn't need to get any more complicated. Hey, Steven. Full disclosure, I've never fallen asleep on you. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's okay if people fall asleep while watching. It's okay. As long as I'm helping someone in some way. Oh, oh I'm glad, Steven, that the, the videos are helping you out. I hope that you uh, have enjoyed the, the sample lesson I've sent you, Stephen. Let's see here. Let me try to pronounce your name. Haifa T R F. Hello there from Jordan. What's up? Welcome to the stream. So now what I want to do is give the shout outs out to all of the viewers. So everyone that is your first time, if it's your first time here, please write a comment down. We're going to give you a, uh, a newcomer shout out. If you've been here for some time, you can still feel free to write a comment. What I can do is see right here how I can point right at my uh, chat box. I will go ahead and say shout out to you. Shout out to you. Speaking of which, shout out to you, Thurman Art. Uh, you're awake. I'm glad you're awake. I'm glad that everyone is awake and enjoying the stream. And see how quickly we can get the effect of, you know, something real under the lights, even though we haven't spent that much time on it. Let's see here, Doreen. Did you hear about the young lady whose snake was laying in bed with her lengthwise head to toe, she took it to the veterinarian. 
and found out I was planning to eat her. Yeah, Doreen, that's one of the things that you hear on the the news. Unfortunately, the news, they just hype up anything when it comes to snakes because they, they like to feed into people's fear because, you know, fear is one of those things that gets people's attention. Um, but in general, uh, the, that's most likely not not gonna be the case and most snake keepers will not for the sake of the 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 creature will not uh leave them unsupervised and i just painted my microphone again and that's okay haha <laughs> Oh, hey, Michael Saxon, shout out to you right there. Hello there from Chester, UK. Welcome to the stream. I hope that you are enjoying your stay here in the live stream. And of course, as everyone's seeing, I'm very kind of uh, free when it comes to not trying to perfectly replicate that. That right there is a suggestion. This is the art form that's the suggestion that that's what i want everyone to get out of this don't ever feel like you're tied down to that you're never tied down to the photo reference remember it's just a reference i'm using a little bit of distilled turpentine well, I probably used a little too much. So let me get some more French umber. Now we gotta go to town and cover And the first layer in the background, I usually paint a little more thin, actually. Um, and I add a little bit of solvent. And again, what I'm using is distilled turpentine. Um, and it will. what you'll see eventually is that it's going to fade. It's going to start to fade in. I got to make sure to cover the bottom as well. Let's see here, Steven, and out comes your favorite brush. Awesome, you've memorized my brush. Yep, this is my favorite brush ever. And to everyone, I use this brush so much that the words, see this? I'm spinning the brush. The words are gone. <laughs> I use, I have two of them. Um, Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle. Um, I believe it's actually a size six. Um, Egbert, see how long the bristle is? It is a synthetic bristle mix, and no, I'm not sponsored by any company to say anything. This is just my uh, honest opinion. Scrubby scrub. I think I got a question on that. Let's see here. All right. So, David Dowden, the brush stroke you used to paint the front edge, is that called scrubbing or uh, scrubbing technique? So, let's see. The front edge here or there um uh, to be honest i don't know of i i tend to say just scrub just because i want the uh brush stroke to show but i'm not entirely sure if there's a, a specific name for the type of brush stroke let's see what have i missed hey oscar Oh, second time watching. Shout out to you. Thank you for joining our stream again. I hope that you're enjoying your stay here. I'm glad that you're you're awake. Do you use water based or uh, water based oils or acrylics? Uh, thank you for for watching from the UK. So to everyone watching and um, you know interested in using water mixable oil paints so water mixable oil paints are oil paints that thin with water 
so that you don't have to use solvents. I highly recommend Cobra Talons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where is my water bottle? Uh, Cobra Talons for uh, water mixable. And uh, yes, I do have uh, water mixable oil paints, but I mainly use it um, in case I have any questions from my online students. A lot of my online students actually use uh, water mixable oil paints. But um, usually I use traditional, which is uh, uh, these colors. So I like there to be some texture to the background. So we're putting in a scrubby scrub texture to the background. Again, French umber, ivory black. Scrubby scrub. Let's see here. Ronald Miller, what's up? I've watched almost every painting you've done online. Really? Wow, that is an accomplishment because there's a lot. Thank you. Your works are awesome. Thank you. And how you inspire others to paint. In my case, to start painting again, I've learned so much from you. Thank you. Oh, that that's so sweet. Thanks, Ronald Miller. Thank you so much for your, uh, your wonderful comment. I'm glad I've inspired you to paint. And what I want everyone to get out of these uh, live streams, these virtual painting sessions, especially with Alla Prima, is that you can be as free as a bird. You can be free. Find form with freedom. That's not a quote from me. That actually comes from Nelson Shanks. One of my all-time favorite painters, uh, Nelson Shanks, would always say that. Find form with freedom. Even though... Um, you know, uh, he probably wouldn't have approved of me using a measuring tool for the symmetry, but in any case, finding form with freedom is a big thing. That's part of what makes this so fun. And now we have the background covered. Now let's put in some more realism for this. Yep, no problem, Oscar. All right, so let's introduce another crowd question. I want everyone here to tell me who, as of right now, currently, which painters of the past are your favorite painters? I am starting off this crowd question with the obvious answer for me, which is, wait for it, Nelson Shanks, he is my all-time favorite painter of all time. I was fortunate enough to meet him. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2015. But if anyone hasn't heard of Nelson Shanks, what in the world? Some, I think my chair just broke. If anyone hasn't heard of Nelson Shanks, definitely look up Nelson Shanks. So go ahead, go ahead, type down, type down. Who is your favorite painter of all time? And those of you that have attended these live streams before, you know the way this goes. Uh, you know the crowd question. So I know you have your answer ready. Go ahead and type your answer. And especially now that we can see, here we go, Ronald Miller coming in with Rembrandt. Solid answer. Oscar Domingo coming in with Velasquez. Solid answer. We all know Velasquez gave me some trouble with the last <laughs> um, Master Study series, one of the previous ones, that is. I want to see 84 answers. We've got 84 of us. If you've been watching and if you, and you haven't commented, don't feel pressured. It's okay. I'm glad that you're here. I uh, I sense your presence and I'm happy that you're with us. Uh, but if anyone would like to write their favorite artist of all time, while I go and add more specificity into the wine glass, 
let us know. Steven coming in with a Bugaro. And Ronald Miller coming with and uh, Van White. Okay, that's one I have to look up. David Dowden, Artemisia Janileski. Solid answer. She is one of the most wonderful painters. And uh, mind you, my response can change over time. Like from day to day, which painter is my favorite. It changes. Depends on how I feel. Artist Wood, what's up? Delacroix, yeah, definitely. Michael Saxon coming in with Renoir, solid answer. Um, I really enjoy uh, the Renoirs at the National Gallery of Art in D.C. And Stephen, I got to see a really nice uh, Bouguereau a while back in uh, New York in the Metropolitan Museum. Super, it's like a... I don't know. Bouguereau is like one of the most, uh, one of the strongest academically trained painters ever. D. Michigan coming in with uh, Edward Brune Jones. Awesome. I got to look that one up. Faithy Arif uh, coming in with Bouguereau. Yep. Bouguereau, solid choice. David Dowden, uh, art, artist. Yeah, I got to look at this one too. See, I learned so much. We learned so much from each other because somebody may type in a, a name you don't know. And if your favorite artist is an artist that someone has already typed, just feel free to type again. That way we know exactly how many you know people like this one artist. Where's all my Sargent fans? What's going on? Where's all my Sargent fans? Come on. Hey, Louie Louie. No favorite yet. That's all right. No problem. Hey, Anthony Murray. Oh, thank you so much for your comment. I'm glad that you're uh, enjoying all the way from Ireland. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, Oscar Turner. Awesome choice. Uh, Steven, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yep, I did. Um, definitely. I didn't know that Bouguereau uh, caused the riot um, in his art school or the art school he went to because he was like, he won like some big competition when he was a freshman, in case anyone didn't know. Hence, Bouguereau. Last time we got a lot of Bob Ross. Where are the Bob Ross fans at? DJ Mick, uh, right, yep. Johannes Vermeer, definitely good. Good choice, solid choice. Ronald Miller. Well, of course, Sergeant. I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was waiting for Sergeant. What happened? <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, pointing that out. Volker, what's up? Vincent Van Gogh. Yep, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did uh, cause a uh, paradigm shift. If that's what we call it, paradigm shift. In, uh, I think Van Gogh is one of the first painters that introduced i think uh well like the modern modernist painting next to uh Cezanne. let's see here hey dark clown sergeant was yesterday maybe tomorrow we'll be sergeant again i don't know yet that's okay i feel that way a lot sometimes Paris Academy, awesome, Stephen. Yep, Fathi, yep, Sergeant, 
Awesome. Monet. Uh, Megan. Yep, Monet. I used to love looking at, um, and I, I still would if I could, uh, see his paintings in the museums. To be honest, Monet is kind of an inspiration for me here with what I'm doing. Um, something about the immediacy of the moment kind of appeals to me and uh, is something that you see in a lot in Monet. Yep, Susanna, Waterhouse and Sargent, solid choice. Speaking of which, we're at 98 likes. Uh, we're almost at 100, so... Anyone interested in uh, sending us a like and sending us to 100 likes? That would be pretty awesome. Huh. I think I can make this more specific now. Hey, Oscar Domingo. Uh, Alvaro... Cast engine. Okay, I gotta look this one up. I gotta look both of them up. And they're still alive. Okay. Awesome. I'm gonna check them out. Thank you for typing them out. Typing their names out. Yep, Dark Clown. Yeah, Sar Sergeant's drawings, definitely. Sergeant's drawings, um, in particular, I think are a really good example of uh, the fact that you don't have to be super, super uh, precise. Because uh, there, there's a lot of liberties, it looks like, Sergeant took with his drawings. Throwing in a little bit more blue. Oh, wow, you sent this to 100. Uh, all right, thanks everyone for leaving a like. We're at 105. Thanks, uh, uh, N. Hindori. Thank you so much for sending us a like. Hey, Stephen. Uh, which Van Gogh? Do you mean the Simon Shama documentary? See, there's just so much to learn in these streams, everyone. Uh, and again, this is going to be, among other things, a pre recorded. Or video. And I, I like that we have the comments, so we're able to read everyone's comments. Hey, David Downen. Louis, uh, Louis Comfort Tiffany. Okay, that's a good name to look at. Um, so yeah, everyone definitely I'm watching this as a pre-recorded video, check out all of the comments and especially all the names that are coming up here. A lot of which I haven't heard of. So, so much to learn. Now I'm just softening these edges ever so slightly. I'm just painting some of these light blue reflections. I think what I'm going to do is drag a fan brush to get these effects. To get these very soft effects.
Hey Maggie. Garcilla Bombola. All right, so we have a pastel artist coming in here. So definitely everyone check out these names. So many artists to look at and to check out their work. And Davy Lim, awesome. And David Donnan, of course, coming in with Soroya. Yep, Soroya, definitely. Hey, Steven, the movie where painters from around the world made oil paintings in his style and then put them together to make an animation. Only movie ever to be made with just oil paintings. Oh, wow. That's cool. I don't think I've heard of that. i got to check that out. A little more blue. You know everyone that wrote cobalt teal or uh, cobalt blue or just teal? I would really, I, if I had it, I would use it for this right now. Because I my ultramarine blue can't quite get as blue. And I hope everyone's liking these still lives, um, these still life virtual painting sessions, along with the portrait ones that we had uh, a while back that we'll still do. But what I want to do is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, some wildlife paintings and uh, maybe some landscapes in the future. Uh, and if you have any suggestions, for subject matter that you would like me to paint, feel feel free to type down below. Oh, thanks, Stephen. I got the link to the the Vincent. Yeah, I'll check that out. A little more ultramarine blue. Let's see, Mohammed. So how do you practice uh, accurate straight lines tend to be curved? Oh, thank you. Um, well, uh, when it comes to super straight lines, I um, will use a T-square. In particular, if you're working like this 11 by 14 inch size, uh, T-squares are pretty good for that. So I just use these. I do get paint on my hands, but it's all right. Um, and by the way, if you get paint on your hands and you have, and you're using like uh, lead white, it's not a big deal. I mean, you're as long as you're not like like eating or something. Um, just wash your hands, you'll be good. Um, hey, Mohammed, uh, thank you. Hey, Ronald Miller. Uh, Helen Van Wick. Yeah, I gotta check that name out. Thanks for typing that out. Definitely check out this comment right here.
And now we get to paint all these reflections. Now we're even painting these little bubbles. And thanks for everyone uh, for leaving a like. We're at 110 likes now. Thank you so much. Hey Mohammed, um, how do I decide uh, hard edges versus soft edges? In this case, I'll, um, I'll use this as an example. I use this as a hard edge because it's it's physically a hard edge. Um, it's a sharp surface uh, that's turning underneath. Whereas this, it's sharp, but it's not as sharp as this one. So I let off a little bit there. This, if you remember, I used the fan brush. I used the fan brush here to push this away. And also this is a little bit soft and uh, what's sharper here um, is everything that's going on here though I'm gonna still push a little contrast here so what sharper things bring everything into focus uh, softer edges uh, tend to push things away if you have too many soft edges um, you kind of don't have a focal point as a strong of a focal point um, but if you have too many uh, sharp edges, the same thing can happen. So you want to have a variety of edges. And that's, that's usually how I go about selecting which edges. And again, for my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for my online students, I actually, uh, in the virtual classroom, I use a drawing app and we'll go in and... Uh, use the drawing app to suggest which edges um, I th suggest which edges to soften and which edges to sharpen um, in my uh, students projects in the uh, virtual classroom let's see here Hey Carmen, hello there from Montreal. Can Cobra paint be used uh, under or over regular? Or I would use it uh, under. Uh, if you're going to use a water uh, mixable oil paint, I would use it under. Just know that um, water mixable oil paints in general tend to dry really slow in comparison to traditional. So you will have to wait a little bit longer for it to dry. Let's see, Steven, so when this is dry in a few weeks, will you go back to it and do a bit more work if you aren't happy? Uh, usually with Alaprima, Steven, I tend to uh, leave them be. So sometimes I'll go in and rework, but for these, I don't think I will because I, I want a more like uh, expressive look.
See now how I'm pushing this edge. Hey Anthony, I've only been painting for 10 months and started off watching Bob Ross now. I'm an avid follower for your work. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad that you're enjoying Anthony. And um, so Anthony and to, to everyone else, um, if you're really enjoying um, these lessons and want to go even further in your painting um, education with me, please check out the uh, pat Patreon, the online classes on Patreon. I also somehow forgot to mention with the virtual classroom, as I said earlier, I briefly spoke about it. I do use a drawing app to help my students to guide them through their painting projects. So I do go um, into the images that they send me and sometimes in the app we'll actually soften things and show them. Other times I'll use symbols to show them which um, spaces to soften, which spaces to sh uh, sharpen, and pull into focus and why. So yeah, no problem, uh, Carmen. So definitely, I mean, these are virtual painting sessions, but uh, by all means, they're not uh, meant to be painting uh, lessons because I will not go this fast through a lesson for my online students. I take everything uh, very step by step. So again, it's a results-based uh, program. So I guide you project by project and uh, you have many options to choose from as it, all of the projects have uh, uh, playlists associated with them so you can follow the lessons. So even though I'm on lesson say 100, um, uh, patrons can or students can still send me lessons uh, images from lesson one, even if I'm on lesson like a hundred or two hundred. So my classes are all about the fundamentals, but you can definitely take the fundamentals that you learn with me and do um, you know more uh, expressive work if you're interested more realist work i've seen a lot of my students um, you know progress very very quickly I'm very proud of my students And again, the classes are just $10 a month. So what's everyone currently working on? I'm curious. So everyone that's watching, if you have a painting on your easel, what are you working on? All right, Carmen, I hope you're enjoying Project One. Um, again, Carmen, uh, the virtual classroom will be coming out tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening. So in the virtual classroom, um, it's it features the artwork or the projects that each student is working on. And again, the uh, online learning community that we have is excellent. I really enjoy our community. Hey Steven, um, so can you decide which lessons to do first and in which order? Definitely. I highly suggest um, project two. Uh, so uh, Steven, I sent you as a sample, I sent you the ending of project one. Uh, but for uh, in the welcome email or the welcome message that I send all new students, um, I actually suggest project two. Uh, project one starts off more you know, uh, direct painting. Project two starts off with a transfer drawing. And, uh, and the first video for project two is actually a materials video, which I can also send as a, uh, you know, um, a sample lesson for anyone curious about it. So project two, definitely. Hey, Mohammed, you're doing some perspective studies. Awesome. 
Are you doing a three point perspective, single point? Hey Steven, so today you worked on two paintings. Awesome. Stan Laurel and uh, Oliver Hardy. Awesome. I myself try to have um, multiple paintings going on at once. So now I'm going to give the uh, surface a little more texture. Speaking of soft edges, now you see here how this is starting to recede back and I'm trying to pull this forward using edges. Hey Mohammed, you're doing a freehand orthographic perspective. Oh wow. Now that is intense. That sounds intense. Hey Dondo, what's up? Oh, you just reran the entire stream. <laughs> awesome. Welcome back, Dondo. Now I have to sit back and figure out what else to do. Let's see. I think a little more uh, detail into the um, the glass to the right. Yeah, we'll do a little more for the glass to the right. A little bit of Venetian medium. Hey Steven, painted a table like this yesterday. Oh wow. You know, I have another, I have an interesting crowd question I just thought of. Um, so if you were to give a rough approximation of how many paintings you have done in your entire life. So how many canvases or panels have you painted on in your entire life? What would be your idea? How many have you painted? I'm going to say I've painted about a thousand, if, if not more. If you were to give a rough approximation. So I'm going to say I have painted about a thousand if not more but only a handful of them are surviving today hey ronald miller starting my first attempt at portrait painting oh awesome yeah definitely welcome to the art of portrait painting as you know portrait painting is a little more demanding when it comes to drawing um you know like this, this wine glass obviously this is way long in comparison to what you're seeing in the actual photo reference there. But it's okay. I mean, when, th when anyone looks at this painting, uh, when it's framed or whatever, or hanging somewhere, who on earth is going to care about the likeness of this 
versus that, no one cares. <laughs> no one's going to, to think of that. They're going to look at this and say, oh, it's a realistic still life of something that I enjoy. Um, I'll buy it. Yay. Um, you know, versus a portrait. And a portrait, someone's like, that nose is too long. Too long, I say. And um, that's the kind of stuff that we get at uh, w w with portrait painting, unfortunately. Hey, Ronald, no problem. Only 12, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, welcome to the art of portrait painting and still life painting, landscape painting, all of it. Um, you know, whether you've painted 12 paintings or 12,000 paintings, you know, there's always something to learn. Hey, Steven. Wow, about 400. Awesome. You did 200 and uh, the Bob Ross type. Well, that's pretty good to teach uh, Ala Prima, definitely. I'm gonna clean off this brush. Hey Don, no, maybe I have about 50. Oh wow. I think I've painted over more paintings than um, paintings that I have that currently exist. I think I only have about, I think, 15 paintings currently that uh, are surviving in my care, other than the ones that I've sold. I don't have a lot of paintings lying around. You would think that I do, but I really don't. Hey, Anthony. About 80? That's pretty good. That's a good number there. And again, if you're enjoying the stream, if you're learning from the videos, definitely uh, please give the uh, online classes a try for only $10 a month. Way more information is offered there than uh, here with YouTube. And thanks to everyone that's uh, replying to the crowd question. Let's see. Hey, Dark Clown, minus one. <laughs> no, nah, feel free to hang out with this Dark Clown. You're all good. You know, among other things, like this is a live chat. This is a live live action does anyone remember the tv show live action live action i don't know which tv show that came from uh this guy chasing these like uh, raccoons around would run around screaming live action live action so it's like live action you know it's 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 fun you know even if you're not uh, a painter i think this is a fun environment hey oscar 50 ish that's pretty good pretty good Doreen, most of my sketches were destroyed, uh -oh. but most surviving paintings and sketches because not all of my works are on canvas and board, maybe 75-ish. I understand most of my uh, paintings uh, did not survive by my hands. <laughs> hey Steven, currently have 59 finished. Wow. That's, that's more than I have hanging around here.
Hey Maggie, only have done three uh, oil portraits and 15 landscapes. That's pretty good, pretty good. Again, um, you know, everyone here commenting, uh, responding to the uh, crowd question. Uh, thank you, everyone here that's that's writing and responding. You know, definitely, definitely making this a wonderful experience for everyone. Hey Maggie, you don't all own all of them. You're, you know, I once saw my grandma walking out with one of my paintings. Like she was trying to hide. <laughs> my grandma was walking out with one of my paintings like under her arm, trying to sneak out the door. I know that feeling. Hey Frathy, I have three paintings on the board. Full-time painter, I'm painting all the time. And when I'm not watching, uh, and when I'm not watching your video. Oh, wow, thank you. And uh, awesome full-time painting is definitely, definitely hard work, I will say. Oh, hey, Steven. Thanks for the email. I'll check that out. Hey, married. No problem. Any Anyone painting I would consider to be a painter, not just Sundays. Yeah, I, I understand that. You know what I do with the co uh, cotton canvases? What I did was I cut them off. The stretchers when I started running out of space, um, but very few of them actually survive that process. But it, it it's one way to uh, basically clear up space. Hey Doreen, there's about twenty five or so. Awesome. Okay, considering to transferring to canvas or board. Yeah, um, I'm glad you liked the question. Hey, Dark uh, dark Clown. Dibujo al carbón y grafito y con tinta, pero siempre he querido pintar al oleo. Aprovecha la cuarentena para aprender. Uh, sí, es, uh, es mejor tener más tiempo para pintar, sí. I, uh, I'm with you there. Oh, wow. So it seems like everyone has a similar experience with people walking off with their paintings. What I did with my grandma, I'm not that evil. What I did was I documented the painting that my grandma took. So she's kind of leasing it. <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't own it, but she's kind of uh, leasing it. I'm not that evil. Hey, Chaya. Oh, I remember talking with you through uh, Chaya. I think I, rem I think I remember talking with you through, uh, through Gmail a long time ago. Unless I'm getting confused, which I often do. Oh, no, it's... Okay, so this is my second time watching you paint. Okay, so I'm wrong. I have been pencil drawing 
uh, still life as you paint. Oh, wow. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you've been uh, drawing with me. You're learning a lot about composition and planes. Thank you. Thank you, Shaya. I'm glad that you're drawing along with us. We'd we'll definitely like to see your drawing, too. Um, again, it's the, uh, with the Patreon, you can definitely send me your drawing. Your two favorite colors are, uh, greens, the yellow and sap green. I really enjoy sap green in particular. I started painting with Bob Ross and now painting, uh, Puerto Rican landscapes and graduating to more classical representations. Awesome. Awesome, Shia. Anthony, is it okay to use a projector to sketch your charcoal drawing? If I joined your classes as I had a stroke, uh, my hand is shaky a bit. Uh, find it hard to sketch. Yeah, uh, definitely, uh, Anthony. If you do have a projector to sketch the outlines, uh, you're in good luck because um, for my online students, I do create drawing templates. So for each portrait, they have a drawing template where they can, um, you know, I can actually show you one. Let me let me get up for a second. I should probably stretch my legs. My legs. Excuse my quarantine hair. So Anthony, I do create drawing templates. These are printable templates for my students to to use. And this is the one for project two. Uh, so they are printable templates that I use um, for the linear drawing. I have the envelope, I have the uh, beginning block in and finished block in. Uh, so three or more different stages of printouts for my online students to follow along. So you can easily use it and project it onto your um, your surface to uh, to get your linear drawing in there. So definitely you can do that. Hey Doreen, you commend the full timers as I always uh, was always afraid to do that, but I'm in a new season right now. Oh, awesome! Your husband is your greatest fan. That's awesome. Hey, David Dunn, and 50 plus watercolors, four oils, three sold. Awesome. You're doing well with sales there. All the paintings that I have sold uh, have certificates, by the way. I wonder if anyone else does this. So when I sell a painting, I do certify it. Um, I get proof of my handwriting and everything. But I'm going to start selling prints uh, in a little while, once I can figure that one out. And I want to start off with these, for sure. I hope so, Doreen. <laughs> I hope that's a smart move. I don't know. I'm very, very uh, particular about the location of my paintings. I usually don't just give paintings away. I haven't given a painting away in probably a good, I don't know, like eight years maybe? A long time. So what would everyone be interested in for um, Wednesday, given the computer works and everything, in terms of subject matter? Because we're actually almost uh, finished with this. So 
The last thing I want to do is just sure up the edges, and then it'll be sure up the edges, and then sign it, and then it'll be done. Yep, uh, Dondo. Yeah, I definitely, yeah, I definitely do certificates uh, with all of my paintings that sell. So, what subject matter would you be interested in for Wednesday's live stream? And don't forget, I may do, uh, now and then I'll probably do some more uh, surprise live streams. I want this to be sharp, this to be soft. Oh wow. Maybe a pumpkin? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anybody home? Anyone here? Uh, so my question was, which subject matter? Hey, Doreen. Maybe an animal? Dogs, cats, horses? Or figure drawing? I wish I could do figure drawing. I think you mean like uh, the, uh, the nude figures. I don't think I can do that. I will get shut off of YouTube in two seconds. But we can do animal, yeah. That could work. Is anyone else interested in animal portrait, uh, wildlife painting for Wednesday? For another fun virtual painting session? Hey, Steven, you lost the internet? Uh-oh. Well, welcome back. Let's see, Ronald Miller, do you ever do a still life starting with black and white monochrome painting first? Um, so Ronald Miller, uh, the uh, the reward painting or the reward image that I was going to send out to anyone that would, um, you know, send us a super chat. Uh, I'll show you it now. This one I started with a monochromatic. Um, this one I did in the classical technique. This is an image that I will send to a high resolution image of one of my paintings, recent paintings that I will be sending to anyone that would uh, send us a super chat. Um, so this high resolution image, but but in any case, this one was started with uh, Grisai, so it's monochromatic. Probably, I think, uh, five to seven layers on this painting. Hey, uh, new 1196, welcome to the live stream. Uh, and I'm going to give you your shout out. So everyone right here, shout out. Welcome to your first time in our live stream. Uh, the live stream is actually uh, almost ending, but um, again, we'll be back on Wednesday, hopefully 5 p.m. 
uh, Eastern Standard Time. But we're not signing out just yet. Not We're not signing out just yet. So do you think it's necessary to be master acrylic before touching oils? No, I, I don't think so. I don't consider myself a master in acrylic paint by any means. Um, so I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I feel like if you really want to start with oil paints, you can start with oil paints. And again, if you're curious um, into more specific teaching, uh, please check out my uh, online classes. If you like my uh, teaching, I can give you more advice there. And if anyone is interested in a sample lesson to my online classes, please send me an email if you are on the fence about the online classes. So let's see here. Oh, thanks, Ronald Miller. So David Dowden, simplified Dutch still life. In one sitting, I don't know about that. Uh, again, David Dowden, the closest I'm probably going to get to the simplified Dutch still life is this. So this is a still life painting that I recently completed in the classical style. That right there is uh, probably, again, five to seven different um, studio days that I worked on that painting that you're seeing right there. Yep, uh, Nero uh, 1196. So definitely, if you're interested in oils, go ahead and just start with oils. Hey, Doreen, uh, did I just get to your email? Um, let me check. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I don't know if I got it. I'm going to type my email again. Steven, I got your email. Nelly, I got your email. David Dowden, I got your email. Zoran, I got your email. Um, let me see. I'm going to type my email one more time. So, Doreen, there's my email. You part the artist at gmail.com. I actually have my smartphone near me, so I can quickly check the emails. Hey, uh, Russ, dude, what's up? Uh, sir, give me some tips on, uh, tips to the upcoming artists. I'm watching you live from India. Awesome. Thank you for watching from here. Or from, uh, sorry, from India. And, uh, it's going to be morning over there. Wow. Some tips. Um, so tips in terms of drawing and painting. Let me see here. Well, for one thing, um, the the most important thing in, in oil painting, I, I believe, is drawing uh, in terms of values and composition. But at the same time, you know, composition in the abstract sense is really what sells a picture, in my opinion. The fact that the abstract is so important is what makes, you know, abstract art something so appealing to people is paying attention to the abstraction. So a grouping of three, you know, this is just one image in light in front of another, next to another. I'm very careful not to replicate uh, spaces in my composition. So this, I don't want to replicate with this. You know, this, I don't want to replicate with this. So not as technical, but uh, my best advice is to study composition uh, composition is a huge thing. And of course, if you uh, are interested in more uh, learning, please check out my online classes. Again, $10 uh, US, uh, $10 a month is all it is for all the lessons and all the virtual classrooms. Let's see here. Uh, John, uh, when am I going to show you the new uh, figure? I'm confused. Uh, figure painting? I'm confused with the reading of that one. Alright, so I'm going to stand back. See if there's anything else that can be said in this painting. Or anything else that I... Well, this platform is a little vague. Let 
The new trim? I don't know what that that is. I'm really confused. Hey Doreen. Oh, I just got your your uh, email. Yep, Doreen, I got you. I'll send you the sample lesson. Hey Marty. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your super chat. And Marty, if you're interested, uh, please email me and I can send you a uh, high resolution image of this still life painting. So if you are interested in, um, you are now eligible for me to send this to you through Gmail. So um, just send me your uh, info on Gmail and I can send you the high resolution image of this still life. It's an 8 by 10 inch original oil painting titled uh, Nature vs. Nurture. Oh, my weight loss. Oh, I was lost. Um, I don't know. I haven't really done any uh, multiple... Uh, hey, Carmen, I just got your email. I will, will respond to you once I'm off the stream. Oh, yeah, with the, the weight loss. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, for me, the camera is actually about, I want to say, five feet above me. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be kind of hard to move the camera there. Yep, Doreen, I got your message. I will be sending you the uh, sample video, sample lesson. So again, everyone, remember the online classes are just ten dollars a month. We uh, we have three lessons a week. You can start with any of the lessons, any of the projects of your choosing, and virtual classrooms are weekly. I'm just pushing this edge a little further out. I'll tell you what, I can, uh, John, I can do a pre-recorded video um, of the old, an old school style pre-recorded video with multiple cameras, but for the most part, I think uh, everyone's more interested in painting. I can do something like that. Multiple camera. A la old school. It'd be awesome to have a multiple camera live stream, but I need a camera person for that one. Because you have to press buttons to switch between cameras. So, um, so Marty, uh, I'm going to type out my Gmail one, one more time. So Marty and anyone else that's interested in, uh, helping us out with a super chat again, thank you so much, Marty. Uh, please feel free to email me here. And I will send you the high resolution picture of this recently completed still life painting. So as a reward for any super chats. And of course, anyone that has uh, 
Hey, Doreen, I just got your your second email. So anyone that has sent Super Chats in the past, uh, also send me your email. I can send you the high-resolution picture. One page of self-care. Uh, enjoy your dinner. Thanks for joining. Hey, Ronald Miller. Your 12th painting was uh, oil monochromed and glazed. Yeah, definitely. Uh, today, for instance, we glazed the um, uh, Vermeer's Girl with the Pearl Earring. Today, uh, actually, now that you mention it, fully completed monochromatic underpainting, and then we introduced glazing today. So, yeah, definitely. We did that this morning. Yeah, Ronald, we'll definitely uh, enjoy having you there in the online classes. All right, so I'm going to stand back again, see if there's anything else I can do. You know what? I forgot. <laughs> One last crowd question. I know we're going on past three hours. Anyone have any ideas for titles for this? I thought of the three glasketeers. You know, the three musketeers. <laughs> the three glasketeers. While I'm signing this, feel free to type some names for this painting. I forgot to do that last time. I'm going to sign it down here once again. So while I'm signing, please type some ideas for the names for this oil painting. I'm thinking the three glasketeers, but if you have any... Any opinions? Hey, Doreen, it's okay. I have your your email now. I got you. So let's go ahead and sign this painting. Okay, I need a I need a thinner brush for that. Whoops. Hey, Shia, three goblets. Dondo last night. <laughs> That's pretty good. Three goblets last night. All right, let's keep the ideas coming. Awesome. As everyone uh, may know, I really enjoy uh, comical titles for paintings last night I need a I need a thinner brush man what are these signatures this might work hey <laughs> you part is glass selection yeah Hey, Marty, landscapes, uh, classical portraits, expressive cityscapes. Landscapes we can do. And classical portraits, uh, we have done some already, but we can do some more. Um, for instance, the, uh, the the Van Dyke and the, the Velasquez. Although the Velasquez, I kind of bombed. Hey, Doreen, uh, Trist with a twist, also. Awesome names. I am struggling here in the brush department to get a good signature. There we go. There we go. Oops. A uh, twist of the wrist. Oh, okay. I get it, I get it. That makes sense. With the, uh, you know, painting the crosses. There's the cross hatches there. The 
the connoisseur. Yeah, that could work, Ronald. Good idea. Stephen, a palette knife painting? I would definitely have to. I would have to use different paints. There's no way I'm gonna do a palette knife painting and use like a big chunk of my uh, cadmium red vermilion. But yeah, palette knife painting can we can do? I have to dig up some of my <laughs> my lesser expensive uh, paints, but we can do that. I like the idea, Stephen. David Dunn, my favorite thing. All right. Is this a title? Like that could work. Now let's make the signature um, 3D. All right, good night, Doreen. Javi, Javi. Uh, Trist with a twist. Yep. Hey, H Hadel Art. Is this your first time? If it is, welcome. And don't worry, we're going to have more live streams. No worries, buddy. So shout out to you right there. Um, so most likely Wednesday around the same time, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know what I need to do? I need to start posting the... Uh, I need to start scheduling these streams ahead of time. So thanks for joining. Don't worry, we'll be back. We'll be back. Given my computer works and I have internet, we'll be back. Last time someone suggested making the signature 3D, so that's what we're going to do. Make a 3D signature. Oh, thank you, Amanda. Yep, Hadil. H Hadil Arts, uh, welcome to the live stream. Definitely, yeah, be back Wednesday. And also, I do surprise uh, virtual painting sessions too. So, um, you know, if you want to uh, subscribe and sign up for notifications, I hear that's how it works. Um, and uh, you'll be notified whenever uh, I go live. I think that's how it works. Now we're making the signature 3D. Does everyone like the 3D signature that we're doing here? Yep. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm just applying the 3D effect to the signature. So, do you like the 3D signature? Anyone? All right, Dondo. I'm glad you like the 3D. 
So if the light's coming from this angle, then it would kind of make sense that there would be... I don't know. Uh, someone suggested it last time, so I decided to do that again. Yep, thanks for tuning in, David. So I'm going to hang out for a little bit longer. The painting is now officially done. I will leave it be for about, I'd say, six months, and then Damar varnish it, or... If uh, if it sells or something before the um, actually one last thing before it's it's completely over. If it sells before the six months, then a uh, once it's touch dry, I'll use Gamvar. But right now, I'm just I have to cover this. I forgot. Last touches here. It's been a really fun time, everyone. Again, all of the comments and uh, suggestions and everything is what makes this such a great learning experience. And again, anyone that is interested in taking their learning experience with me further and to connect with me more, please check out the online classes. Again, only $10 a month. Virtual classrooms every week. New lessons uploaded three times a week. And you can send me original artworks for mentor tier constructive critiques monthly. But again, everyone that's writing comments and, uh, you know, everyone ju that's just attending the, you know, the stream, you definitely make this such a wonderful learning experience. Yep, thanks for um, tuning into the stream, Jay. Thanks, Susanna. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. Yep, uh, Marita, I just got your your email. I've got you, buddy. I will send you your high-resolution image. Thanks again for your support. Yep, Marie, yep, I got your email. All right, I'll hang out for a little bit longer. And a question I usually get about brushes, I will address now. That many. I used this many brushes. I don't feel like counting, but it's a lot. A lot of brushes that I have to clean, but I usually clean the smaller ones together and the larger ones together to uh, expedite the cleaning time. So I'll probably just clean these all at once. Hey, Zoran. I'm glad that you enjoyed the, uh, the glass paint along. Very fun and educational times, everyone. I'm just cleaning the brushes with the uh, paper towel and distilled turpentine. Just going to hang out for a little bit, wait for any questions. Deal. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Teresa. And again, thanks everyone that has sent the sent the like. 
And especially thank you to you, um, Marie, for the uh, super chat. It really helps me out so much. And just like that, the small brushes are now clean. Clean enough, that is. Again, just turpentine, paper towel. Well, thanks, Donzo. I'm glad that the uh, virtual classroom is helping you out. Yeah, I really enjoy creating the virtual classrooms. It's a, definitely a group effort. Yep, how do you? Um, I do. So, um, so the must-haves for painting are definitely a pretty solid easel. I will say I don't really talk about easels very much, but. Um, I like to use French easels. This is a French easel that is, has like a piece of glass leaning on it. Um, you know, besides the obvious things like uh, the paints and the brushes and stuff, a really good uh, easel and painting space, I think. Hey Marie, table for three. Oh yeah, that's a good name. Good name for this painting. Yeah, table for three. That's good. But yeah, um, Hadil, uh, if you're, you know, very interested in uh, learning uh, painting in the classical technique and uh, just learning the fundamentals of painting, uh, please send me an, an email. If you were interested, I can send you a sample, Hadil. I can send you a sample lesson to my, um, to my classes if you are interested. And uh, Hadil, I can send you a sample lesson containing uh, materials for painting if you are interested. I will type my Gmail once again just for you and for everyone interested. So Hadil, if you were, there it is, there's my uh, Gmail right there. So please send me an email if you were interested. Um, I can send you a sample lesson that contains information on uh, specific materials for you. That would be more of a precise answer than uh, anything I can give in like, you know, a couple minutes. I actually ran out of turpentine. Wow. Need a little more turpentine. I actually have to. I have to hit up a store soon. Almost out. Thanks, Stephanie. Just hanging out, cleaning my brushes. Cleaning the old brushes. Does anyone have any questions specifically about the classes? I know that there's a lot to talk about. Did I, did I mistype my name? Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's my email. Yeah, I don't know why I put that one down. I don't know why I put the Patreon. Thanks, Dondo. Yeah, um, Murray, that's my email address. You're part of the artist at Gmail. Whoops. Turpentine's getting to my head. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, Mina. Thank you. 
I really like uh, expressive still life, to be honest. Uh, expressive still life and landscape. I had a suggestion for um, wildlife painting, so we'll most likely do that on Wednesday. I'm going to see if I can schedule. I'm going to see if I can schedule these um, virtual painting sessions ahead of time. So I'm just cleaning off the rest of my brushes. So I really hope that everyone has enjoyed this live stream. We will very likely be back Monday. Monday, really? Uh, yes, Monday. But we'll very likely be back on Wednesday. So not tomorrow, but the next day. 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget there are sometimes surprise live streams as well. All right. Maggie, do I need another picture of Boo Boo? Oh, that's from the daily party days, huh? I mean, sure, if you want to send me more uh, pictures to paint, yeah. I got to log into the old Facebook. Haven't been there in a while. Yep. All right. So thanks, everyone, for attending tonight's live virtual painting session i hope you enjoyed your stay whoops i hope that you will be back and i'm still here cleaning off brushes <laughs> Yep, Boo Boo was a parrot from the daily Upari days. I mean, that that we definitely go way back. Make sure not to get too much turpentine on your hands, everyone, or solvent in general. Alrighty, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed your stay with us here in the live stream virtual painting session. Yep, Teresa, Maggie, thank you. Thanks, everyone. I wish you all the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.